Ah, and welcome everyone. This is a conversation community, and this send is called Make Things Happen. Now, uh, there's basically just three things I'm going to sort of talk about. It's uh, agency, which is kind of just a fine word for kind of just make things happen, and inclusivity and curiosity. Now, curiosity is one of those weird and wonderful things that we actually don't know much about. It's just that we know it when it's there, right? So I'm not going to talk too much about curiosity. Uh, inclusivity is kind of after a while, like trust, meaningful connectivity, shared understanding, community, all those sort of nice things that we need to sort of work a bit for sort of to get, right? And in order to get all these things, uh, there's agency, so I'm going to sort of talk mostly about that. But these three things also makes for great conversations, and that's kind of why I'm sort of mentioning these three keywords. So in order to make things happen in the network, you can basically focus on agency, inclusivity, and curiosity. So then basically you're good to go. And you obviously will make tons of mistakes, and that is kind of where we put you in almost exactly the same boat as me, because I made 10,000 Google Plus posts. I made more, possibly more, mistakes in a network than you possibly could make, uh, which is good because then I sort of learned and got tons of feedback from loads of, of nice people, and that sort of helps tell me the agency part, right, what things works, and I do more of those, and what parts of my agency, my making things happen, doesn't seem to sort of float in one's boat, and then do less of that. So it's kind of a very sort of simple formula. Uh, with that said, um, as me. There's a bit of a, as we could say a bit of a, more a challenge, more mistakes in a network than you possibly could make, uh, which is good because then I sort of learned and got tons of feedback from loads of nice people, and that sort of helps. There's help. some <laughs> strange lag now, so I'm hearing myself kind of after a while. Yeah. So there's someone. Those if if, if the others could mute your microphones, because then it will be Doesn't very very weird for me to be. Kind of uh, after a while. Uh, Is it coming so from that, Ann's channel? Maybe. Can you mute your mic, Ann? Or what do you think? It could be you, Andre. The, your microphone. If you mute that one and see what happens. So, or, Fer Fer Fernaz, or yes. Ah, there we go. That should, should ah, excellent. make it. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, this is um, not to worry, right? I'm just going to sort of do this kind of short version again, right? So it's agency, curiosity, and inclusivity is the kind of the, the, the plates of sort of the, today's plate. Now, uh, and if this is going to sort of join some people, not to worry, right? We're kind of just taking it in stride. So, yeah, the challenges. Um, they are five, now, kind of given the context that this is sort of agents and making things happen in a network, right? Loads of other people involved. So you need sort of five A words sort of consider as sort of possible challenges. And the first challenge is access. You basically need to sort of log in to Google Plus to join the conversation. Uh, or you need to access information, you need to access um, key information, key relationships, key resources, key something, right? Uh, it's kind of basically just the Woody Allen thing, right? 80% of success is showing up, sort of access. But if we sort of manage to sort of address and manage that challenge, then the second challenge comes across, and that's sort of attract. Can you attract uh, reciprocity from other people in the network? Can you attract necessary resources in terms of attention and time and, and other nice things? Basically, can you... Uh, share your story so people will help share your story for you. So if I would sort of now suddenly switch into my putting my sales hat on and say, uh, here's a nice little method card set and it's just 9.99, special on sale just today, right? Now, I could do that, but that would be terribly lame, so I won't. And th th there would be a risk of, sort of you tuning me out. You would sort of begin to think uh, that what is Jan about now? Is he going crazy on us? Uh, so this is kind of where, because we're in, in, inundated with sort of sales pitches, right? We sort of can go almost 
nowhere without having a sales pitch thrown at us. So we're again going increasingly skilled in tuning the sales pitches out. So uh, the attracting of resources is best usually when we basically just share stories. And then the third challenge, and this is kind of where I want to help from you because no one has actually helped solve that yet, and that is what's called anneal. Basically, uh, we humans on a collective level, minding you that this is again kind of these challenges in, in our networks already, but no, no one of us uh, collectively we haven't really figured out so we tend to have things grow increasingly worse and I mean really really bad and then and only then do we do anything about it so the annealing thing is kind of our propensity to wait until something is really badly broken and then we fix it and annealing also has kind of an, a symbolic thing in terms of if we are too broken inside we tend to go forth and spew forth politics or this or that and put ourselves on a soapbox and then we sort of talk other people's ears off and well I sometimes talk other people's ears off but it's for a good cause obviously so I'm different right um, yeah I'm, I'm getting to you now I'm going to sort of speed back forth the, 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 the two remaining ones and those are augment and achieve so achieve is actually not a challenge as much as it's kind of a test character test because if you get to achieve stuff and you get sort of fame and fortune people will tend to become envious and they will pro project strange stuff on you right and augment is basically what happens if we learn to play really well in a network we get reach resonance uh, loads of page views and Google Plus and stuff so uh, that's pretty much it and before we sort of go uh, jumping in sort of address these kind of separately we might also want to sort of give ourselves some, some basically just uh, saying hi and I'm so and so and so could we start with if um, Terry had problems with unmuting her mic I, or well, we could take Terry last right so we get from another uh, uh, so Anne Marie, if you want to basically just say, present yourself, introduce yourself, and, and will you have to sort of unmute your mic to do that? Not sure if you, you hear me. Or we could have someone else start. Uh, so and so. Ah, there we are. Anne Marie, if you hear me now, you could basically just say, uh, introduce yourself. I had problems with unmuting my mic. Hello? Or well, we could take Terry last right. get from the another. Uh, uh, so Anne Marie, if you want to basically just say, present yourself, introduce yourself. Anne Marie, you. you're getting a, just a horrible delay, many seconds or minutes even. Okay, well, <laughs> I can't help it. Sure, yeah. um, um, Have someone else start? Uh, so it doesn't call. work what I say? You ah, can't hear what I say? If you hear me now, you could basically uh, say, uh, introduce yourself. I have problems with my mic. Yes. Hello? Or, I could take the last one. Yes. Uh, just a horrible delay, many seconds or minutes even. Okay. Well, <laughs> I can't help it. Um. Well, we can have someone else then sort of go. Um, let's see, this new one. Uh, uh, El Elwin, you wait first, I think. W would you do the honors then? Greetings from Pittsburgh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I can't help it. Um, I will wait. Would you, do you understand? Okay. Uh, I 
Hello. I'm still experiencing a delay. I'm hearing people minutes after they have spoken. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I mean, no, no one seemed to know why, right? This is kind of one, one glitch number 103 in my long catalog of strange and weird and wonderful hangout on air glitches, right? So it's just oh, yeah. don't mind that. You know just, um, do you know, John, why it is? Perhaps, yeah, perhaps, because I had a, I had a, yeah, now I know why I will close it down. Because um, we have double links. Uh, so there is one on the community page where we uh, where the event was broadcasted, and then we have you send us another link that some of us might have opened, including myself. <laughs> so I had both running, and that's why when I closed that link, now it uh, is gone in, in my head. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So I mean, I, I can explain else. why I sent. Great that you sort of found that, John. Um, now. In order to, to explain very briefly why I sent us another link is because my links and Google in its infinite wisdom adds kind of language Swedish at the far oh. end of my URL, right? And I usually remove that because I don't, usually people will not be able to log in if it says SV on the kind of far end of the long URL, right? When I remove that, that usually does the trick. So, okay. so um, yeah, cool. I mean, t technology is wonderful when it works, right? And so now we should actually be good to go. So uh, now it's good, yeah. Yeah, cool. So El Elvin, should you uh, grab the mic? Or is he still hearing double, double voices? Could be. So, so is Elwin on one, on another link similar to you, Jan, and uh, you just can't get off of it, or what? It's gone. I only have one now. What? Yeah, and I don't seem to have any echo now. I um, hope that wasn't me doing that. <laughs> but I, it, it's gone on my end. Yeah. Good and Elwin is still here in double, so that's... Uh, Two, two tabs. So yeah, uh, you could close. In the browser, yeah. Ah, in the browser. good to go. So uh, a round of, of introductions, if you uh, if you'd like. Uh, and Elvin, you could start, and then we one by one. And you have to unmute yourself, Elvin, to to go. Yeah, you have to unmute. It. Shall I start then, John? Because I'm I'm not muted. Yeah, go ahead then, John, and then <laughs> others can unmute and. and, uh, and, and we, can, we, we we can keep the flow. So it's it's a great thing if you want to talk is to unmute yourself. Um. So um, yeah, my name is Jan. I don't know. I don't haven't met so many of you. I think I've met Chris sometime and Bernas maybe. Um, and uh, well, uh, I'm uh, based in Sweden, just as Jan. We're not that far apart from each other actually. We're uh, sitting in two different cities. It's about an hour's drive or something like that. Um, <coughs> and I work as uh, I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, right now, I'm doing two different startups. And um, basically, this this community has been a incredible experience and, and a vast, vast, vast source of um, um, knowledge for me to 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 tap uh, when I'm doing one of one of the startups, basically. So, uh, and I hope I can help to contribute a bit in, in this in this session as well. Great, great stuff. I mean, we'll get back to some of the. Um, secret world domination stuff that John and I are doing now. So, so we, we hope to we we in in, in there somehow. Uh, and and um, so um, Farnas, would you continue? Um, my name is Farinas Parsai. What should I say? 
Um, Tell us a bit more about you, what you do, and where you live, and something. Um, right now, I'm mostly writing and working busy with community and uh, Google Plus and doing some uh, volunteer work as a mentor and uh, uh, I see myself quite busy but I'm not in a job. Cool, cool. I mean, I mean, welcome and, and um, uh, let's see, Elvin, uh, are you? Sorted with the. No, you haven't the double voices again. Uh, Anne Marie, I. Uh, the yeah. double voices? Yeah. Ah, no double hi. Voice. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, um, I live in uh, Denmark, uh, just a couple, one hour north of Copenhagen. I'm not in a job, job, job either, but I. I work as an icon painter. I teach icon painting and most of the time I paint icons. And when I really enjoy myself, I go balancing stones. Mm. <laughs> and I, I saw that post. That was a really great one. Right? That was great. Yeah. Yes, thank you all. And uh, my one of my biggest interests is um, how to spend the rest of my life um, in peace, in happiness, and uh, joy and laughter. And I'm practicing and trying that every day. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Next, please. Uh, yeah. Uh, hey, John. Hi. Hi, Lee. Hi. <laughs> Hi from Canada. Uh, um, my name is Lee Sapera, and um, I have a small business here. Um, I check into the conversation community, and I see a lot of inspiring posts from all of you. So I'm really glad to to meet with everybody today. And uh, I think this is my second or third hangout, John. And it's the first time with the double voices, so I'm really sorry if that was me. <laughs> and apologies no, all no around. Problem. No problem. Um, let's see. Uh, Ron, you haven't. Um, let's mm. Ah, great. Terry says that she's going to type an intro. Uh, Ron, would you unmute and say, uh, yeah, there you are. I'm Ron, Ron Scroggin, I'm a guitar player and guitar teacher in Chicago, and um, I found my way to this community as a result of some of the work we were doing locally, and I uh, just found amazing parallels here that really resonated with what was going on in my creative life and very grateful for that and some of us here in this community are working on various ways of doing things and <laughs> uh, so I'm working on uh, with a lot of help from everybody on um, Something called Project Mixtape. Uh, it's sort of a. It's really it's sort of a approach to production generally, but specifically for uh, making posts on G Plus and uh, it's modeled on music and uh, it and that has a lot of parallels with what's been going on in my life for several years now and uh, it's really great. Thanks a lot. Um, well, let's see. Um, there's there's so many things could be said, but I mean to sort of keep to it kind of the the where I started to sort of make things happen. I mean one of the uh best you should read the, the Terry's uh, Terry Ingram uh, retired corporate financial analyst working now on 
managing gardening and sustainable living. Great intro, Terry. Thanks. Uh, and I mean, uh, Elvin, if you kind of get the double voices sorted, you could sort of just wave on mute and then go join. Um, so the conversation which can actually be, be distilled very simply, I mean, nowadays at least, so the only rule that goes in conversation community is basically add considered considerate comments on other people's posts. That sort of begins and ends the whole rule set. Uh, because, um, I mean, there were four or five rules to start with, and now there's grown such a great bunch of people and meaningful connectivity and loads of things happening and people are basically letting their hair down and, and feeling comfortable. So now there's just one rule. And there's a bit of a magic involved here, right? Because actually we don't know each other that well. Uh, so why should we bother commenting on other people's posts, right? We should sort of go out there, don our best content marketing Teflon and armor and basically go out there and conquer, right? But I sort of set the conversation community up differently right from the start. So if we do make considered, considerate comments on other people's posts, little by little there's a growing meaningful connectivity, little by little there's an increasing trust flow. Uh, we basically rediscover each other as people. And since the technology, whether you call it a hangout on air or a digital community or whatnot, allows for people to basically just be one click away from any other person on the planet, the implications of basically just doing that, adding a comment on someone else's post, is just a miracle and it's, it's, it's magic all sort of by itself. But we typically rush past that, right? We are Because we are kind of busy building our stuff, building our business, building this, building that, building a brand, busy building, right? So we kind of just yeah, 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 I'm commenting, yeah, I, I know that already. But if we sort of stay and do it really slowly, we're actually doing it so slowly so we sort of get 0 0.3 seconds before now, even. So we notice what happens a fraction of a second before we actually comment. Then we can sort of little by little rediscover what was our intention by commenting. Was it to sort of get just our own words edgewise in, or was it sort of do some kind of marketing for our stuff, uh, or was it actually an authentic, genuine, considered, considerate comment on someone else because we actually thought that some other person actually shared something that we thought was great somehow? And if we do, uh, the really strange thing, which is actually not so strange once we rediscover that there's people in the other end, at the other end of all these sort of edges and networks and things, is that people pick up on that. And once people pick up that, wow, someone's paid me a visit, someone said hello, someone actually added some value to my post, to my stuff. So if I say to Anne Marie, well, wow, cool thing, you're putting stones on top of each other. Elvin put some great posts just the other day in the conversation community. And I actually sort of took the trouble in telling him that this is kind of... And I added a few words basically told him that it was great and this is why I think it was great. Farnas made a huge splash entry when she joined the conversation community and she posted something that was so spectacularly beautiful, I had to put it in the center pin post right from the start. Uh, John Freeman and I actually didn't know each other before Google+, although we both live in Sweden. Uh, so, and now we're uh, actually sort of planning on, on starting a couple of really cool projects together. And kind of basically just one thing led to another, right? We kind of basically just posted stuff and commented and then we hooked up and talked by telephone and so. Uh, Lee has already crafted a really great chapter in a social presence field book, which has basically just self-organized and just happened, although it sort of goes slowly because self-organizing, right? So I need just to wait for other people to actually send in the chapters as well. Uh, Ron and I have sort of been talking about product mixtape, which is a really, really great thing, and he's posted some stuff about Gridwalker, 
which is basically him using the product mixtape little blog creation machine and he's cranking out really really great stuff already so I mean the product mixtape is kind of already beginning to sort of take shape Terry is also a new member and I mean having a financial financial analyst is I mean pretty cool all by itself right I mean I'm actually not that sure what a financial analyst even does right uh, and and here we are kind of scattered across the planet and having a conversation now there's probably tons more I could say but we could sort of skip ahead on and, and clear across all the kind of uh, w projects that are happening in the conversation community so we could actually see if we could just have a round of, of, of um, questions I mean the conversation community is kind of you're all members, so you're, you kind of sort of know that it's there, right? And it's a digital community, and it's on Google+, Plus, and I'm the founder. But if we sort of would stop and think that if I say that the only thing you need to do is add in a comment on other people's posts, why do we need a, a conversation community? Um, I mean, to sort of ask those kind of seemingly simple questions that suddenly would sort of see us, that we would be able to actually see us, right? I and mean, suddenly we would sort of become present almost. And if we if we do, that is kind of what I see as possibly the next leap, right? Where we sort of can begin to share to more people. To basically tell others that's no biggie, right? You can just be yourself, more or less. And because we've already tested that for a while and it works. But anyway, I'm sort of getting a bit ahead of the, the, the conversation so um, anyone really could sort of ask I mean not any which question but something to do with conversation with you and I promise I try to answer it so um, I guess it, just in uh, in the topic of, of getting things done in our, our, our conversation here and knowing that I see all of your posts in, in Google Plus and a lot of you are artists, photographers, poets, and how how do you uh, know when your your work is done? I, I'm a vague post, or I, I don't post very much in in the community because I'm st starting to develop, I guess, my voice with words and and just learning to write. Um, but how do you all go about? saying my work is done, either that photo or the poem or... If I can put that out there. Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, I mean, anyone else could actually answer that. I mean, I'm not sort of the, the resident expert on, on, on... I mean, I could give my answer and everyone could sort of add their own answer, right? Because for me personally, I really don't know, right? I mean, I... I've done 10,000 Google Plus posts because I really didn't know, right? So I put uh, lots and lots of stuff out there. And then a funny thing happened, right? The network began to sort of give reciprocated trust back because that's sort of what was my intention. Kind of an honest kind of, here it is, what do you think? Yeah. Um, and I think I get, I get so caught up in, you know, trying, trying to... Um, come across I guess with the, the right words or maybe to not offend somebody or to so you know I, I do post I, I feel like I don't post enough to make enough mistakes and maybe that's probably what I should be do out there doing more is, is making more mistakes and and with that comes along some, some conversation and, and of course growing you know your character and I think that's what Google Plus is about um, it's more about the context and about the information that's going out. So, as more so than say, I guess in a Facebook atmosphere <laughs> where you're just joking around with friends, or um, and that's what I love about the the conversation community because all of you folks are are so very talented in in many different ways. Um, so. You know, as much as I'd like to comment out there, uh, my plus ones, I hope, <laughs> I hope come through. Yeah, I mean, they do. I mean, uh, actually, to sort of just state for the record, right, I'm a gas bag, right, so you shouldn't do the things I've been doing, right, because it's just me being a, a blabbermouth sometimes, right? So, but 
to be kind of more precise, if I have 29,000 people in my circles and someone else has 300, those two networks are of equal value. If I have done 10,000 posts and if someone else has done 100, that is of equal value. And I possibly can't sort of emphasize this enough. Right? So if we sort of then begin to see that, yeah, this is what is John trying to say. It's not about quantity at all. Right? But my quantity was because I wanted to sort of find out things like agency, reciprocity, resonance, reach, uh, loads of stuff. Right? And the only way I knew how to do that was to sort of throw lots and lots of stuff up because I really honestly didn't know. And the good thing now is I have sort of sorted out quite a number of things. And since I want to grow the community, so I'm sort of sharing back the findings I've got with the help from you, basically just sort of by conversations and sort of interaction. I'm sort of feeding that back to the community. And that has been going on for some time. And this helps us to... Um, begin to understand I mean if someone would never have shared anything uh, during these last two years in Google Plus it would be a bit difficult right to actually understand kind of who is that person what would you like um, I mean there's nothing there right there's just basically just a profile basically it could possibly also be just be a blue head right kind of instead of an, an actual face so you don't have anything to go on right and that That'll make it very difficult. But in defense of all those who are lurkers who don't post all their matching very infrequently and they don't say anything in, in, in online conversations, uh, we are kind of still learning. I, I could give a kind of a solid example of that. For the last two years, there's been millions and millions of people basically sharing almost all cats and bacon stuff. Right? Cats, gifts, dogs, stuff, right? And, I mean, in my crude way of sort of doing math now, this amounts to one gazillion cat and bacon posts. Right? And one way of looking at that is basically that's just useless waste of time and space, right? And everyone's attention. But what if it isn't? What if it's sort of collective intelligence at play? What if this signaling of harmlessness could actually be sort of a collective intelligence? I mean, it's kind of a collective intelligence that this still has sort of a some time before it wakes up, right? But it's still collective intelligence. So if we don't accept that the what is, the isness of things, right? Cats and bacon is basically just cats and bacon. And there's no value judgment, right? There's just stuff. Because we honestly don't know on a collective level what to do with these all these new fan of digital tools. I mean maybe it, that is what we should do, right? We should do cats and bacon, right? And then we just sort of rediscover that the simple things in life is the best, right? It's the bee's knees, right? And then we sort of need to go to go almost zen on each other, and then kind of, and then we basically should ignore those crazy guys like John Keldon that goes biosemiotics or neuroscience or stuff, right? But it could be kind of a combination of both. So basically, my line of thinking right now, and I mean I could be wrong, that we're kind of setting up like a uh, communications protocol and the substrate for the communication protocol is cats and bacon and on top of them we can add some selfies some um, favorite pastimes uh, we are out uh, doing some travel from new nice places we have doing some art uh, and eventually there's a fledgling growing uh, shared interest graph Ah, so I'm a fiddle player. Yeah, and there's a couple of other fiddle players in the conversation community. Wow, cool. And Marcy Lukert, she actually is building a violin right now, and she's sharing that story in the conversation community, which is really cool, right? Because it's 30 years since I built my last one. Uh, so, I mean, f great memories, right? Someone is building a violin. Cool stuff. And it could be anything, right? could be... Um, Anne-Marie doing her icon paintings. Uh, Farnas telling about her uh, kind of... I mean, she's done a lot and lot of communications work, right? And it shows in her posts. 
So a story doesn't always need to sort of be obvious. There's stories there, right, if you sort of know what to look for. And I mean, Lee, if you want to, you could basically share stories, kind of what happens in your life and what you see around you, right? Those would be great stories. So sometimes we think that if I just point my iPhone out through the window and there's some trees in the park, well, no one in the right mind would ever be interested in that, right? But chances are there would be some who would say, yeah, those are really cool trees. I mean, you just never know, right? Uh, and I mean, if I go on with sort of biosemiotics and neuroscience, I used it that on a whim kind of a year ago, and then suddenly Manny St. Victor pops out and says, wow, cool stuff. I'm interested in those things as well. And he, he just happened to live sort of across the pond from my view, right? In, in this strange land called US. And now we've done like 10 hangout on air recorded videos, he and I. Funny how that happens, right? So, uh, but this requires some trust, some leap of faith, um, the willingness to sort of be wrong, to make a fool of yourself. So this again why we need to sort of be forgiving because some people really aren't equipped to sort of making a fool of themselves on a daily basis, such as I'm happy to. Uh, and again you see my fault here, I'm talking too much. Um, so let's see if we can actually find some uh, this was really lovely by Terry. Uh, I'm new to conversations, but I find it to be the only G plus community that truly feels like a community as defined about to me. I mean, this is really cool, right? I mean, something I've been doing has some probably resonated with others, right? Uh, and to give you a backstory on that, I started out. Uh, wanted it to grow to around 150 people because then I would sort of have the brightest best and having cool conversations about neuroscience or marketing or stuff, right? Uh, so I was very kind of careful who I sort of invited in and who got to be in and, and so on. Basically, if you're a blue head, you don't sort of get to, to join, right? Because, I mean, that doesn't work. But then a funny thing happened and, I mean, that was basically we, or rather you, uh, so now there's 950 people, which is a bit of a problem, really, because I really don't know how to sort of deal with 950 people. And then the good thing is that that is actually also okay, because we are sort of happening on a regular basis. There are people posting, people commenting, people sharing great stories. Um, so the self-organizing thing is a large part of why I sometimes share seemingly strange posts. It's basically me trying to sort of provide feedback what I see is happening or sort of about to happen. So the make things happen is also on a collective level uh, but on a smaller level there's me and Ron Scroggin and Colin Kilburn doing Project Mixtape. There's me and John Freeman doing something to do with more or less information literacy and nature. There's a couple of other projects happening, uh, metacognition, um, uh, social presence field book. Um, and by the way, I could sort of just say briefly, social presence field book is, is kind of what I see as a possible kind of starting thing because the only thing you need to do is write 500 words forming your own individual chapter and you're good to go, right? And then you have a chapter in the book. It's going to turn into an e-book, an actual book, uh, a digital community in its own right, a launching campaign and, and stuff, right? So if you want to do marketing and get your store out there, this is one of those things that kind of services that the community provides already. Um, But I mean, other than that, um, it's basically up to us, and that's kind of the, 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 the fun thing with it, right? So if you ask me, Jan, do you know with precision what's going to happen uh, three months from now, six months from now? And I've, well, I have some ideas, I have some hints, some clues, some cues, but no, with certainty, I don't know.
and that's a cool thing, right? Because then you know for sure that there's room here, right, for you to happen. So, and that could be anything, right, from just fielding out a couple of posts, getting to know some people a bit better. I mean, there's nothing stopping you from actually doing these hangouts yourself, right? I mean, obviously, I this is kind of my 40th or 50th hangouts. And I'm sort of, sort of, I'm kind of beyond the kind of the the the, 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 the fear and intimidation kind of was what usually sort of feels kind of it's a bit scary to to begin with, right? But it's um, You're an excellent teacher for 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 this Google Plus. I've been watching uh, you build the community for for 500 members now. I think I joined in around four or 500, and um, it, it it's always amazing every person that that new that joins in uh, how much uh, they contribute and and uh, post really inspiring things. So. I mean, you've done a really good job, John, in bringing us all together. So. Oh, thanks much. Thanks. I mean, this is, I mean, for me, this is lovely to hear, right? Because sometimes you f do feel as if you are kind of living in S Sweden, right? Right out in the middle of nowhere. And most of the people, this US, uh, Canada, large contingencies from, from UK. But this is again where. Um, I mean, the agency thing is a bit. Um, I mean, inclusivity is is uh, really difficult to just sort of mandate, right? Everyone should now feel included because John says so. I mean, that would be useless, right? Uh, everyone should be curious about all the other people's posts. No, we we can't. If if we fo feel called and curious, we feel, and if we don't, we don't, right? But agency is actually one of those things that actually we can work on. And access, I mean, if you are here, then you have actually also already accomplished level one, right, access. Because you're already here in the Hangout, right? you already joined the conversation community. Uh, the attracting resources to your own story, to your own sort of little nook and cranny and, and abode in, in the, the interwebs, you're actually also in full swing of doing that. because. That's kind of what it was. Why is it important when you said a couple of words about introducing yourself? Because it's kind of how you attract other people to you. Best used to tell others who you are and what you do, and what's sort of cool with that. Uh, and the third thing, annealing, you don't need to worry about because no one has figured that out yet, right? How that really works. Once the network effects kicks in, right? How are we gearing up towards the next step? and actually just connecting. I mean, let's say I invite a, a million more people into this Hangout. Suddenly it's a million people in the audience, right? So they don't get to sort of hog the mic because that would be really difficult, but they do get to listen, right? Uh, should, should, would, that, would that have us change how we come across? Should we change our tune? Should we sort of... Uh, pitch our voice and, and story differently because under this loads of more people. But the funny thing is that this has already happened, right? So they're, they're, they're just next door. They're literally just one click away. Actually, it's a billion, right, if you go just by Google+. Plus. But I mean, a billion is just silly, right? Uh, you can't almost say a billion people because just ridiculous amount of people out there. I mean, I have 29,000 people in my circles, just me, and that's just still a ridiculous way too many people. I, I mean, what to do with 29,000? Should you line them up in a long row and see how long line it is? Or should I gather them here in Norcop in Sweden, have them play football? But that would take like forever if everyone would actually get to play, right? So it's too many already. So this is kind of one of those things that is good to think about because uh, the the only way I can grok my mind around this is to imagine as if we live on just one planet. That's the only way I can think about that. And if we do, 
And if we did do some sort of imagining, right? And this is just me imagining things. I'm not saying this is true because I'm just imagining you sitting sort of across around my coffee table in the kitchen. This is just me imagining, right? I mean, could be that you are actually not existing. This is just me talking into a laptop video thing, right? But if I sort of pretend as if you are real, there's some magic involved, right? And some technology magic involved. And then there you are. Then it seems to work. I mean, you have sort of possibly come across this again and again and again. People just sort of come up from from nowhere, right? And they connect with you, and you have conversations, or they plus your posts or something. Uh, and we another. Let me give another perspective. We thought for a while with Facebook and Twitter and things that we should do content marketing, right? And it's still kind of a bit of a thing, right? Like you should wear a power tie, right? Or you should wear a hat because you're, you're a, of the male species. Um, but the truth is that you don't need to do content marketing. So if you share about yourself in your story and if you basically just behave as a more or less a human being, that's the most brilliant content marketing you can ever do. And obviously, you could put some sort of header and some nice image and a little bit of text in between the header and an image and, and, and a link to your website and stuff like that, right? So there's no harm in doing sort of as a... It's there if someone would want to check it out. But I mean, content marketing, you don't need to do that ever. Not as a kind of the main thing, right? So you just let that happen instead. And then you just got to do the clever stuff once people want to know stuff about you. I think fairness waves. Go on. You know, I think of, um, in terms of a roadmap, I don't know, my thinking is like that. I just feel like, where, where are we in the roadmap? If you had a roadmap or if you're going to have a roadmap, and when people join newly, they can see how much they have to, you know, yeah. achieve and how much. Is that possible here? I don't know. It's just an idea. Uh, it exactly, it's possible. Uh, but uh, let's see. I, I need to sort of... I, I'm going to say graph theory here. And now you just pretend that I didn't say that, right? So we just skip ahead all, the whole part of the graph theory. But the nutshell version of that is that there's around a thousand people almost uh, in the conversation as of now. Let's say we grow this to 3,000 people. Just three times as many. And then graph theory predicts that if you have one plus per comment or one plus per post now inside the conversation community, by 3,000 people, you will have nine times as many. And this means that by then, you will be able to know almost with precision what part of your story you're sharing is actually meaningful to share with others. As of now, it's still a bit difficult because, I mean, one plus, right? It could be me just being kind of super friendly and plusing everyone's comments all the time because I just wanted to say to everyone that, I read that. I'm here, right? I, I got your back, right? Uh, but, and I mean, how do you know if someone is plusing you? It, it, it was just a plus, right? It doesn't matter. But over time, it does. If you sort of keep cranking out stuff, and you notice that uh, Farnas is actually interested, Lee, in what you are sharing because she's kind of commenting and posting again and again and again, right? There's already kind of a meaningful connectivity happening. But with kind of three times as many people, there will be nine times as many of these pluses, comments, reshares, stuff. So at 3,000, it become really, really interesting. Now, with 3,000, there will also be a roadmap towards having me being able to uh, begin to sort of do deal flows, referrals, kickstarts, uh, campaigns, marketing stuff. Right. So then uh, we are 
sort of inching closer to sort of return to almost content marketing again. But I mean, this time we're sort of building it not on who gets to shout the loudest, but who is the most stand-up conversation community citizen instead. So it's kind of, again, this... So the quickest way of sort of traversing the roadmap is actually sort of to, to deeply uh, reframe and reconsider the cats and bacon stuff. That's the quickest. That's also difficult, right? Uh, the slightly slower but more sure way of doing it is, is the one I'm advocating, right? Adding comments on other people's posts. So if we just do that and nothing else, we are following the roadmap brilliantly. The, the difficulty with doing a roadmap is it's 950 people. There's 950 different perceptions and interpretations of what the conversation community even is. So this makes it really complex. So, I mean, if you ask me, I can give you kind of my interpretation, obviously. And then if that would just go, I have now there is a roadmap, all capital letters, because John said so and he's the fearless leader. And everyone just gets okay. to shut up and follow, right? But that would be a bit useless because then the, the self organizing thing wouldn't happen as much as it already does. So that would be just me putting a kind of wrench in the whole machine. And why would I want to do that? But again, I can sort of see. So I'm, I'm kind of there and nudging and kind of trying to steer and steward, uh, catalyze, facilitate stuff as much as I can, right? Because I read everything uh, in the conversation community and I'm beginning to see that there is some kind of a trajectory and out of commenting on other people's posts there is already a growing meaningful connectivity and out of that over time grows trust flow. And once the trust flow reaches across sort of above a certain level, there's basically nothing we can't do. So one of the things eventually I mean this is not a given, but there could be something called community as a service. Where suddenly we need to be more and more comfortable with being resident experts because what we're doing here is kind of almost a first we're actually doing a community purely on a digital space. And then the community as a service would then be just a nice way of packaging this and telling others that, hey, you could do this as well in the corporate internet or in a Facebook group or anywhere you like, right? So it was never about technology. It was always about us, which means that then uh, there's also a reason for Project Mixtape, for metacognition with Doug, uh, the uh, social presence dictionary, the taxonomies for taxonomies, because with those we can sort of go a bit agnostic towards the actual platform. Let me explain that a bit. Uh, if we happen to reach a sufficient shared um, understanding of what inclusivity is, what agency is, what curiosity is, I mean it's almost impossible to reach a full shared understanding about that because I mean those are really big words. Uh, and they need to, to be lived rather than just talked about. But if we would get some kind of shared, shareable understanding around that, those three, and we just put them as hashtags, right? we could then s start something here. We can continue in email, through tweet, chat, wherever, right? So I we could just have people join from... And I mean, some people are... I mean, I have some friends now say, John, we miss you. You are not on Facebook anymore which is really weird for me, right, because I sometimes have a Facebook tab in my little Chrome browser and then I have Google Plus right next. So if we take, we, it would take them approximately two seconds just to go from Facebook and go say hi to me. But they are kind of, we miss you on Facebook. Which for me is really strange, right? And then obviously they think that I'm strange for thinking that they are strange. Obviously, that's the kind of a miscommunication. Right? Yeah, and the I, same I, with the Twitter crowd because they want to do Twitter, so they can't sort of see themselves. They would rather be dead than being on Google Plus, right? Because the cool guys are on Twitter, right? Obviously. Uh, so well, I mean, for me, this is strange, right? Because it's people. Yeah, fair enough. Go ahead. You know, it, uh, what I mean is that um, what I, you, I understand what you're saying, 
uh, but I also joined um, not long ago, uh, as you know. I feel like we can make people more excited uh, if they know where we are coming from, where did we start, where are we now in the road map, where are we, where are we going, and uh, what are you know our hopes or our you know something like that. Yeah. Uh, when I say roadmap, does that sound uh, very traditional or make sense? I, don't know. I mean, about everything, not just about hosting and uh, comments, but as a whole, as a community. Yeah. I mean, this uh, is where, I mean, I personally, I love the idea, right? I mean, I love visualizations, diagrams, uh, roadmaps. Uh, I mean, it's almost my day job, right? I do uh, kind of. Uh, really kind of elaborate uh, big whiteboard big mind maps and collaborative sense making and methodologies and, and stuff uh, so I mean roadmaps I couldn't love that more it's just that when I do my roadmap posts uh, I sometimes get people actually saying to me private message John you are being intimidating please stop Uh, so it's it's a bit of a challenge, right? Because and and then when I sort of try a complete different tack and basically say the only thing we need to do is uh, uh, add considered considerate comments on other people's posts. Some actually do get that that is a great idea, and some others then think John is just saying that there there's got to be a catch, right? No, there's no catch. That's the whole thing, right? So, so the, but but combining the best of these things, if we could sort of, I mean, this is kind of me honestly asking, if we could sort of do a very very simple roadmap, and then also sort of tell people that the way to sort of go through this roadmap, to actually sort of go places, is just one step at a time, one comment at a time, one considered comment at a time, right? Um, I like to think of it as as kind of time traveling, anything on the internet. What I post today might hit John three weeks from now, and what John's posted a year ago just hit me today. Um, that, you know, and, and when we're talking about the audiences that we're connecting, we, we often forget about the timeline of how long that post has been up. Right yeah. now there's a thousand people in the community and then tomorrow, another thousand people are joining up, and and those thousand from yesterday have seen and maybe stumbled across today. So it's it's almost compounding. And and one of the weirdest things about the internet is that if we would have explained it to ourselves 20 years ago, that we could be sitting in a room by ourselves, but actively having a conversation with people across the world simultaneously, um, is is quite amazing, J just in that. Yeah. So. I mean, obviously, we can have. Um, here's an idea. Uh, do Do you all know kind of the idea of a uh, kind of a coffee house? We basically can come and go, right? And if there's people there that seem to be involved in a cool conversation, you can say that. Can I pull up a chair and join, right? And the other say, Yeah, cool. We're talking about this and this. Right? And you go sit down, have a chat, but there's no one sort of telling you that you need to sit the mandated two hours, right? There's there's no conference feel to it. Obviously, people could say that we are go now going to pull up chairs, having a really long session for two hours. There's going to be lots of coffee. All the words problems are going to be solved, and here's the sort of very iffy, learned stuff that sort of came out. Of it, right? So there's more of a more of a kind of a Symphony uh, score than just a jazz team program, but what I'm trying to do is to a whole open a space where someone can just to pop in once a month, and my hope is that there's still going to be some stuff there just by sheer serendipity, by sheer luck. Probably, right? For some people, they can just gather together in, in smaller groups. I mean, you we we can't we can't actually sort of wrap our minds about sort of let's join all 950 I mean how to even do that right 
uh, then everyone would get to the three seconds time to, to say something clever, uh, which is, well, difficult. Um, but if we sort of join three or five or six of us, so you, actually, you can actually see in one way the implementation of the roadmap already. So you can actually see that there's five or ten or fifteen or twenty people plusing a typical post inside the conversation engine. And there's typical of five or ten or twenty or sometimes more comments. So actually, with a bit of a kind of imagination, there's the roadmap. Right? But I mean, I can't have you look at this as closely as I'm doing. I mean, I have to, right? I'm the steward. I'm the, sort of the, the caretaker running around and doing stuff. But what I'm noticing is a slow and sure increase in presence. And the best crude proxy metric for seeing that is that slowly, little by little, the pluses per comments on average is increasing. There's more people there reading, there's more people there interested, there's more people sort of joining in. And I also now and then do my uh, dreaded private messages where I basically tell people very politely if, if they want to be thrown out because they are not participating like ever. And invariably, everyone replies, no, please, John, don't throw me out, because I love it here. It's just that I don't have any time whatsoever to participate. But I'm here reading as much as I can, so thank you. So, and, and this is an important thing, right? But this is also difficult, right? How do you do a roadmap where you factor in those who are sort of not giving themselves ample room for their own voice yet? How do you sort of make room for those who are not as visible or as, as seen or as heard as much, right? Um, I mean, th these are things that we possibly will never solve, right? Human beings have this strange propensity to sort of elect someone mayor or pharaoh or king or president, right? And then the whole mayhem sort of goes on as it has used to kind of for the last 5,000 years at least, right? But what if we can sort of coordinate differently through these new tools? I mean, we don't know yet, yet right? But what if we could do 21st century coffee houses? And not just this community, but many others. So we could sort of spawn ourselves into doing more of these. And then once the roadmap is sort of done, we would know because you would sort of go on and start your own stuff and that would work really great as well. You would attract your first hundred, your first three hundred, five hundred, a thousand, three thousand people and it would just sort of grow from there. Uh, but I mean, it's anyone's guess if that is kind of what we should use this for. But for me it's kind of obvious that uh, if we share stuff then it makes a difference. I mean, it, we can actually see this from neuroscience, right? If we share stuff, that affects both people, both the one who's sharing stuff and the one who sort of got something shared too. Uh, the whole sort of mirror neurons thing and, and empathy and, and stuff. So it really makes a, a really, really deep difference. And then suddenly becomes uh, extremely important what we share, who we are, what we're doing. But this is again what I want you to sort of not think too hard and too deep about, right? Because then would you sort of be the, the analysis paralysis part, right? Uh, and I think that is kind of what happens with most lurkers. They are what would others think if I would just share a picture of a dog, right? Would they think that I'm would they think less of me? if I'm not as learned about biosemiotics as that intimidating John Kelden guy, would they think less of me? Can I actually join one of those conversations? Um, and, I mean, th people think these things, right? I can give you kind of a story here, because we, that, that might help. Uh, when I grew up, I had three sisters. And compared with those three sisters, I was the silent one. So this means that, I mean, it depends, right? Then you can sort of imagine my sisters, right? <laughs> yeah. So, 
Yeah, yeah. Maybe I should sort of just don't compare, right? Just sort of share whatever story you have to share. Right? We are not a closed system, right? We are an open system. I'm talking about community. So we will be affected by, by a lot of things. And uh, as an open system, can we look can we look at this totality as a have a holistic approach, I mean, look at it as a totality. When I say roadmap is, for example, for a member to see, oh, this community was there, now it's here, now it's going. How can I be a contribution at any stage? So this is really exciting for people. Yeah. I don't know if I can express myself. Yeah, I mean, it's still a great idea. And, and I did put in... Uh, I think I call it conversation community dynamic synopsis. So this is possibly the closest to a roadmap that I can do. I mean, I could sort of just uh, reframe and rewrite that and make it simpler a bit and make it quite more structured. And I could basically call it a roadmap because it's more or less what it is. So for those who can't follow all the kind of hundreds and hundreds of posts that just whisk back in the stream inside the community, um, I could even put try to put that as kind of somewhat of a the, the pinned post. I mean there's a limitation here. Google Plus communities just allows one pinned post per community, which is obviously bonkers, right? It should, I, I, I should at least get three or five or ten, right? But I mean I just have the one I can pin. So that one remains on top, the other ones are just vanishing when other people write new stuff. The kind of the stream logic. Um, there's many more things we could do. I mean I could do a mind map and I sort of link to that mind map in a post. And then we could basically just build on this mind map. It's just that uh, that is almost bound to be intimidating, right? All us old stogies who know sort of the backstory and knows a couple of hundred posts, we know the mind map. We can sort of begin to sort of share code, say, yeah, I had the mind map, the dynamic synopsis. So then people will s just sort of go away, right? Because they haven't got a foggy is what we're talking about. So my intention with saying one rule, add considered, considered comments on other people's posts. I mean, everyone can do that. And then suddenly there's a level playing field, right? Everyone can join on an equal footing. You can be a newbie. You can still do comments on other people's posts. And they count as equally valid and good as anyone else's, right? And what I don't need to tell you is that you, do, you, you should post stuff, right? I mean, I actually had a rule a year ago when I said a good comment is worth 10 posts. And that threw people. And then I had to sort of explain that, right? Because but I still th think it's true. Because the comment is kind of a genuine response, right? I mean, anyone can send out posts. Just stuff, right? I found a, here's a cute dog. Here's a this. I mean, here's something. Here's me having breakfast. Here's me having a cup of coffee. It's nothing to it, really. But once there's a comment, and if it's a genuine one, not a marketing spiel, then something happens, right? There's a connection. And I, I, I almost can't emphasize enough how, how wonderful that really is. And then the whole network effect kicks in, so people can reshare, share further. So, but, I mean, I, I hear you, Farnas. I'm actually going to do a roadmap because it's, it, it is a, a genuine need for a great many people. So, but if that roadmap is going to sort of be very, very simple to begin with, that is because I want to sort of play well with all the, the newbies, right? Because it's a fearsome thing, a roadmap. Then suddenly John is the fearless leader again and he has the roadmap and you'd better follow the roadmap or else, right? I mean, I'm not going to actually say that in words, but that might be some people's interpretation. Um, so, uh, I'm eventually there will be some kind of a hashtags, and eventually we will sort of distill those back to the three, right? Agency, curiosity, inclusivity. So we're kind of back to where we started, where if people understand that there is an inclusivity thing, 
John is pretty keen on inclusivity. I'm very happy to report that there was two guys that I threw out some time ago and we've now basically made amends basically just I, I, you can, uh, in the north of Sweden you have a, a great saying I'm not sure if that translates well into English but we spit each other in the face and call each other by first name I'm not sure if that translates well at all into English right but that's kind of what happened right so now we're friends again or sort of and they got back in uh, so I'm kind of big on inclusivity. Curiosity is kind of, well, it's a good thing, right? I mean, if we if we go up in the morning, check for pulse, we're still alive, then we should be curious about something. And agency, well, agency sort of got we got robbed by agency, right? So we get others, politicians, rich people telling us what to do and we just say yes, thank you, right? You shall do thou shalt do content marketing. Yes, sir, okay, I will, right? Does anyone know what content marketing is? No, but someone told me that that's what we should do, so we are going to do that. Right? And I'm kind of a lone voice in the wilderness still that it's, it's, it's content marketing is just bollocks and you should never do it. You should do marketing, but you should do that through your own story, which is much better and it's much more authentic, it's much more you, it's much more fun, much more meaningful, and eventually brings more money. So what's not to like? Uh, but I mean, content marketing, if you still want to do some sort of glitchy, nice picture thingy, uh, if, that, if you think that's cool and fun and great, and that's your way of sharing your story, then that is great. You just don't call it content marketing. As long as long as I'm not around, at least. So, so, um, but because content marketing is, I mean, if it's obvious, if it's declared, that's it's fine, right? And we can tell the difference. But if it becomes subtle, so we start to believe that we are actually doing conversation, but we are actually not having conversation. We are having fake conversation because we are just doing marketing. Because our brain has sort of begun to rot a bit, right? Or our heart, or wherever it is, we sort of the, the content marketing virus sort of got hold, right? We we then sort of find to our dismay that other people are tuning us out. Yeah, they are tuning us out because you're doing content marketing, and you should stop already. So this is kind of um, content marketing event in up in broadcast, and broadcast then you do agency, but then you stop being inclusive, right? Because you don't listen to other people anymore. And you also stop being curious because the curiosity now has been perverted by your marketing formula. So you're just doing it like as if you would be a machine. Don't be a machine. So for me, these things are simple. It's just that we have sort of gotten, um, and obviously this, this is a subtle thing here, right? This whole Google machine thing, the matrix that we are running around in, inside is sort of subtly influencing us. So we should share simple content marketing-ish stuff. Because it's set up that way. Right? Twitter is the same. We should just do 140 characters. And 140 characters, I mean, I can tell my life story in 140 characters. It's too little, right? But I can sort of send out the pitch. That I can do, right? So it sort of subtly influences us towards uh, content marketing. Facebook is a bit similar. Um, that I mean, it says that it's a social graph, but it's not, right? It's just a spiel, a marketing spiel, and a clever one. Um, I mean, Google Plus can actually be used as a clever marketing spiel as well, right? But why should we? Why should we spend our sort of precious few hours on the planet doing that? I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm happy to be wrong. Uh, just because I talk too much doesn't mean that I kind of know more things than you. It's just that these three things, once we reclaim agency, and by reclaiming that we sort of get being to do stuff that we want to do, people pick up on that. Yeah, yeah, that's a guy who's doing some cool stuff. Let's follow him. But if we stay curious, eventually we get to the inclusivity part as well, just by default, right? So this is the beauty of the commenting on other people's posts, as if we give a damn. Then those things will eventually follow all by itself. It won't be kind of a linear thing. Uh, I always will sort of do some kind of roadmap-ish thing where we are right now. 
Uh, yeah, Anne-Marie is, I'm just going to say, wave to Anne-Marie. Um, but I hear and I find myself repeating. Um, I mean, obviously, we could sort of do kind of another round of questions uh, or anything, ideas, suggestions. Ron, you are. Yes, I, I'm. Yeah. Actually, I guess I, I was slightly distracted for a moment because I was reading about Anne Marie leaving, and I believe you said. So I actually missed the last sentence, but I believe you were saying if anyone had anything to add, basically. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I did want to add that I've sort of been getting off the drawing board lately about posting and production and. I'm the, I think the model is great that we're working with, and uh, but I tried to kind of climb up off of it lately, and I've just been, you know, doing more listening to people and commenting, and um, it has and it has had some effect, and I really noticed it just recently. Uh, I'm sure that that's what stimulated an old memory that I have of when I was 14 years old. I was playing with a neighbor and some in his backyard and some boys and girls we were all there playing croquet in the backyard and somehow I ended up inside the house by I was the only kid in there and the I was at the kitchen getting a glass of water and I sort of stood off to the side and the kitchen there were a, a bunch of women uh, milling around and bustling around and getting things done and socializing and there were, it was all the mothers of the kids and I was the only kid in there and I, something happened uh, something happened just it took it only took a second or two and all of a sudden I realized I was just immersed in the world of women and it just and I was 14 years old and it really gave me a completely new perspective and I Never forgotten that, and um, I think I've been experiencing that just recently in the uh, community. And you said that the, there's been more activity lately, and more plussing and posting and commenting, I guess. And and some of it's because some of us are women, and um, I've been experiencing that more in the community. And I, I'm really glad. I um, it's a it's great that we're adding that. More so that it's happening more. That's really important because um, we really need it. We need the the part of our culture that is women, and uh, you know, traditionally it's been kind of separated, yeah. and uh, between men and women. And uh, so, I, so I think it's been a <laughs> my experiences lately with interacting with people on the internet and. Um, I mean, in the, in the community, and um, the stimulated that memory, and uh, I mean, this is kind of great. I mean, this is where um, lots of memories kind of come up to me as well. I mean, when we sort of yes. did our kind of our clan reunions on my mother's side, kind of where thirty or forty of us in, the, in our family, extended family, uh, we usually do did croquet as well, right? <laughs> and we played croquet something fierce, right? There was kind of no mercy. Right? Uh, I, it was great, great fun. And we had, uh, do you have that in the US and other countries as well? We kind of throw loads of water on each other. You, you start with water pistols or some small things, right? And then you end up with sort of big buckets of water and you sort of drench the others, right? Oh, yeah, uh, it can happen. So, yeah, that was loads of fun as well. But I mean, this was in the north of Sweden, right? So kind of couple of hundred meters from the, the, the house, I mean uh, my grandmother's house, uh, it was just wilderness, right? It was also always fun to sort of bring some of the friends, sort of not family, but sort of friends of the family, and some of them have basically just lived in Stockholm, in kind of the capital city in Sweden, just their whole life, and they've basically just almost never seen a tree, right? And then the funny thing happened after a couple of hours, they sort of got almost nature sickness 
they, they got severely intimidated because there was loads of trees. I mean, millions, right? And they, they suddenly realized that, wow, this is nature. I mean, this is just nature. There's no car inside. There's not even a road. There's just blueberries and loads of trees and really weird stuff. And I mean, they, they just, sometimes they just lost it, right? That was just great I, fun. Yeah, that, that, that was great fun because then the, we could sort of pick them back up into sort of some semblance of all of that. But basically told them that it, it's, it's just you being out in the forest, nothing to it. And we taught, taught them how to fish and how to endure getting one million mosquito bites and that kind of, I mean, the important stuff in life, right? Uh, and yeah. this is where, uh, I mean, I'm really uh, glad I sort of had my karma sorted, so I sort of have, have this sort of origin, right? I mean, my granddad was a lumberjack and a poacher. Not to show you even know what, do you know, what, do people know what a poacher is? A basically, poacher. Going right, basically going right out in the middle of the wilderness and killing animals that you really shouldn't. Right. right. Yeah, poacher. Uh, right, and the local authorities was trying to sort of always catch him, and they never could because he hid these sort of animals in in the bog, deep, so they couldn't be found. Right, so he, so he always got away. And this was important, right, way back, because that sort of kept the family fed right, during winter. So um, stories like this, I mean, obviously when I was young, I thought this is a bit primitive, right? I mean, it was a bit ashamed, right? I mean. Honestly, Grant had been a poacher. I mean, he should have been kind of a director or something nice, right? A teacher or something, right? But the older I get, the more I'm kind of honored by, kind of unhappy by sort of having that lineage. I mean, this, I, mean I, I shan't, shan't go on. There's a couple of hundred more stories. Sadly, some of them I can't tell because they're kind of <laughs> those kinds of stories, right? I <laughs> should such a tell <laughs> after you've made sure there's no recording, right? Um, so, uh, but was oh, this being recorded? Well, f some I of these stories just are just kidding. Yeah, um, uh, you know what they say about limericks, right? Some limericks you you can't oh, yeah. tell in front of women, and some limericks you can't tell in front of neither women nor priests. Yeah, those kinds of stories. Right? Uh, but stories is kind of the lifeblood of everything, right? Yeah. So if you, I mean, I contradict myself, right? So if you infuse your content marketing with your own story, then you should do content marketing. And everyone will all be better for it. So, um, but as in terms of, let's see, could I say anything about what's the next steps for? Yeah, possibly in August, not sure yet because it's self organizing. It'll happen when it'll happen, right? There will be kind of a big launch by the Social Presence Fieldbook. That will turn into possibly kind of a spawn of com campaign to the community all by itself. And there will be sort of plenty of opportunity for people to sort of launch more stuff upon their own individual chapter. I'm also doing on the side, which I hope to sort of converge with the Social Presence Fieldbook, a bunch of uh, interviews with people. So every one of you, if you want to, I would ha be happy to do an interview with you. Those interviews will be forming some kind of a Google Plus expert panel series of interviews. So I've already done Martin Shervent and David Amerland, uh, Howard Reingold, uh, Gideon Jorsenblatt, and Jake Croston, and more coming. So I'm planning to sort of get to at August sometime or September, not sure when. Uh, will be kind of 30 or 40 or 50, depending on how much I get to work. Uh, and then these interviews together with the Social Press and Feedback, together with the campaign site, will make for some really, really interesting uh, opportunities for you to basically get your story out. So in a way, this is obviously me doing marketing. But what I'm after is to tell others that we're doing something really cool and you could as well. This is kind of what is my prime motivation. That here we have an, an amazing set of tools. We are literally just one click away from every other person on the planet. Let's just use it. And I, I want to sort of weave in the project mixtape a bit, if I can, with me and Ron Scroggin and Colin Kilburn and a few others. Um, that is about using a music analogy 
to have people find craft blog posts, Google Plus posts, in a way that people rediscover their own voice. It's a pretty cool thing. Uh, and that I see as a possible thing to sort of build further on. Once there's, let's say, 25, 30 chapters in the Social Person Fieldbook, that can be launched because there's sufficient stuff in it. But these sort of beginning voices, these chapters, can then sort of be further built on in terms of interviews, project mixtape, loads of other things. So in a way, I have kind of a very kind of loose constellation of lots of moving parts that eventually might converge in something sort of even cooler than the conversation with you. But that is sort of subject to consideration, right? It's kind of up to us to sort of make that happen. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, social plus field book. Yeah, there's a new one. It's a brand new one. I really didn't know that until a couple of days ago. It's a possible way of doing a load set of sort of sustainability products and taking kind of a slightly different tack, all the way from personal sustainability, basically taking care of your own body and your own health and wellness, and all the way up to kind of this big grand story, sustainability, kind of saving the planet from ourselves and everything in between. And the key ingredient here might be community, digital community. Are we doing something that is sustainable? Or are we just sort of wasting time and effort doing a bunch of useless things? I mean, sustainability for me is one of those sort of big things. But that's very new, so I really don't know if that's sort of going to happen or not. But what I do know is if we keep to those three uh, uh, agency, inclusivity, curiosity, which can be found in every great common thread, in every great sort of conversation committee post uh, thread we will make things happen. So my guesstimate for now, it's just a guess, an estimate, is that around at 3,000 people, then this will have already happened. I mean, it's anyone's guess when we get to 3,000 people. And I mean, we obviously could sort of invite loads of people, but then that sort of begs the question, are they willing to be here? Are they willing to engage in conversations? And we don't know that. Um, Yeah. I'm going to try and not be such a floater, Don, and I'll do some posts in the conversation community. So, and I'm going to look forward to all your posts. Yeah. I'm going to have to run for yeah, the day. Yeah, no, no problem. So and by the way, I'm going to say this for the record that. that if if you contribute something kind of once a month, that is great, right? I mean, this is kind of not kind of quality goes a really long way, right? I mean, for me, it's very obvious that you're kind of used to stand up quality guy, right? And I, <laughs> you had me at hello, sort of. You don't have to post all that much, right? It's 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 cool, right? So, uh, but uh, a practical thing. Because there's loads from Terry Brown, from John Freeman, from others in the, the chat, and I'm going to copy paste that. Um, so we sort of continue whatever questions, lines of inquiry there are, and, and there is in, in in the chat. I'm going to copy that into the post, the make things happen post in the conversation community. So then we can sort of join in whenever we can. This is also one of those sort of things that people need to sort of rediscover eventually, that there's no such thing as an old post in the conversation community. That I think you said that, Lee, recently also, to begin with, kind of the, the, you can actually go to kind of one post that is kind of one year old, right? And you could just sort of... So uh, I could possibly explain that a bit. I've said somewhere in the conversation community that we are here to... Uh, rediscover, rekindle, and revitalize conversations. So I, I chose those three verbs with some care when I started the community, and they still pretty much hold. So in a way, if we want to uh, make things happen quicker, if we want to sort of get others 
more on board with some kind of roadmap, a roadmap we build ourselves, then those three are the ticket. So we can rediscover stuff that we really care about. Doesn't matter if it's new or old. Doesn't matter if it's sort of started in conversation community or elsewhere. Could be an old Facebook post or a tweet or anything, right? Picture, text, anything. And we rediscover that. Then rekindle uh, is basically you could sort of have a here's a great post with three old comments. I mean this post is worthy of more comments and a more conversation and exploring from different angles. You can rekindle that. And revitalize is for me mostly about rediscovering those people in here. And this is just so simple so it's difficult. Right? I mean, you know all the things about attention economy, right? And you can sort of listen to someone very carefully for three seconds and then this better be a pitch or I'm out of here or I'm going to tune you out, right? And I mean, this is just crazy, right? This is kind of where we sort of pretend as we are not people. I mean, why? So, um, and everyone is sort of running around, yeah, I'm very busy, right? I don't have time for you because I'm very busy. And by the way, I have seven million page views. I am def definitely more busy than you, right? So you, so you know, right? And then we can play all these silly games, right? But we don't need to. Right? I mean, obviously, I'm proud of seven million page views from a different angle because that tells me that I've shared stories that I've actually read, shared, and reshared. Right? So I actually, it actually made a difference that I shared so many posts because I figured out how to do that in a way that works. And I could tell everyone who wants to write, if you want to sort of get your story out there across the planet, I could tell you how. There's nothing to it, really. But that basically it's just the same as riding a bicycle. You have to sort of fall off the bicycle an awful lot of times, and then you ride a bicycle after a while. It's kind of the same thing. So there's really nothing to it. So if you have a story, I mean, it could come to you tomorrow or tonight in a dream, right? Wow, this is a story, and... I need to have billions of people knowing about this. Or there's a new innovation from in my business and what if I got a thousand more clients because this is really cool, right? This is the best thing since sliced bread or something. You should reach more people, right? Tell me more people about I mean, I think that product mixtape is possibly one of the best things in sliced bread, right? I used to have to sort of pace myself with Ron Strogan, right? Because I'm I mean, I could give you a backstory on that as well. I, I drew architectural blueprints by age nine, right? And already by age seven, I read French, Russian, and English classics. So I'm really weird. At, yeah. By so I need to be careful so I not sort of go too quick, right? I mean, I could obviously, from a personal point of view, I could sort of draw a, a roadmap now and for three years ahead. But that would just be seriously wrong, I think. Right? I mean, the pressure. Now you need to stay here and do my bidding for three more years. That might turn out to be awful, right? I mean, obviously it's strange also, sort of, you see. Um, it's like when you're out driving, right? And you have a map and you want to sort of go somewhere. Uh, Obviously, you want to know more or less that you're actually going to get there, where you want to go. But sometimes you need to do a pit stop. You need to fill up the, 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 the car. Or you need to sort of buy some, some stuff and have a snack or something, right? So you can't always just, just go full speed ahead in a straight and narrow, right? Clear across the destination. You can't always do that. I mean, it's the scenic detour. But here, where it's a network and there's 950 different versions of the map, I mean, if you put 950 layers of onion skin on top of each other, it's going to get really wrinkly really quick, right? And who gets to say what part of the layer of the onion skin gets to be removed and what gets to sort of stay? It's difficult, right? really difficult. Um, yeah. 
So, um, but those parts actually can field out back. Those I already sort of do. Um, I mean the whole map, map and territory thing, right? So we need to sort of be careful so not the map is going to grow into an equal size as territory, because then we can just as well navigate by territory instead of map. Uh, so it's an age. It's an it's an old conundrum that. Um, and everyone who's ever done product management knows intimately kind of the, the, the pain and suffering involved in sort of trying to sort of do roadmaps, right? trying to get everyone on the same page, trying to get everyone to do things more or less in, in, in congruence, coherence. Um, I mean, we're here voluntarily, so that makes it even more difficult. Um, I think I mostly covered... Um, it, it might sound strange that just by making considered, considerate comments. I mean, considered is kind of thought out, right? You, 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 you thought something and then you put the comment in. Considerate is you being curious enough about the other person who did the post, and uh, you're also holding an inclusive space. So when you put the comment in and that sort of comment gets responded to by, for instance, the person posted, uh, you're holding a space for whatever response you get. And basically you kind of, you can actually almost silently say thank you. Right? And even though it sounds really weird, right? It sounds superfluous, but it really makes a difference. If someone's saying thank you, then yeah, I mean, that you can sort of almost infer right on the spot, that's a nice person, right? Because that person just said thank you. So there's no such thing as saying thank you. You you can't say thank you enough, right? It's we seem to have an enormous appetite for having being thanked or and saying thank you in return. Right? So it's but I got asked once that, John, can't we simplify this and just everyone should just go around and cultivate it in a sense of gratitude? And we're sort of done. Well, yes and no, right? because there's stuff that needs to be done. So, gratitude is eventually what everyone comes around more or less to. Or we could call it trust, we could call it gratitude, we could call it love, we could call it compassion, we could call it unity, loads of all these things. Um, it's just that uh, people are wary, people are cynical, people are reserved, people are kind of not going to believe it because it sounds too good, all that, right? I mean, it's it's common, right? I mean, who in the right mind would believe that, right? Um, so for me, but this is just my personal opinion, it's better to uh, hold space, that's inclusivity, for whatever happens in the post and the comment thread, that is kind of what happens, and that's we're cool with that. Uh, curiosity is kind of what made us put the, put the post and put the comment in, in the first place. And agency is kind of little by little, um, others get to understand what we're on about. I mean, I have a strategy, I have kind of wayfinding, I have a methodology, I have a roadmap for the next three years, so it's not that I don't have it, right? So there's a method to the madness, I usually call it. Uh, it's just that this is difficult stuff. I mean, this is really difficult terrain, because I, if I go kind of full public, full transparent on all of that, then I almost have no choice then to become the fearless leader. And I desperately don't want that to happen, right? It might eventually happen anyway, right? Because there's people who are used to thinking that, regardless of what I think, right? You can't sort of really kind of know what people think about you, right? If they're not telling you. But that, again, is why curiosity, agency, and inclusivity, because those eventually get to transparency and trust and meaningful connectivity. And then we can get away with all those, get rid of all those projections, right? And we can just be ourselves. So even if that's simple, it's also enormously difficult because, well, we train not to be ourselves. In these digital spaces, we should put on a kind of a nice facade. 
uh, all of those those things. Right? So it, it, it's it's um, um, I do have a shortcut if you want to hear it, and that's kind of from game the game perspective. So unlearn, level up. So then you know pretty much everything that I'm going to sort of put in in, in, in the roadmap if you understand unlearn, level up. So unlearn, you let go of all the stuff that you thought you needed to do but you don't have to. Because you sort of, then you carry a lighter rucksack, right? And again, you move forward better. Uh, and level up is just imagination and curiosity, right? What if I can sort of do agency, inclusivity, curiosity? And the surprising thing is that people will notice this almost immediately, right? There's a new tone, there's a new voice, there's a new found confidence, there's more fun, there's more content, there's more substance, resonance. There's loads of things happening just by you imagining that, yeah, I can do this. But you can't if you don't unlearn, right? Because then you're, you're in the critic or your old failures or your whatnot kind of is in the way, right? So heavy rucksack, right? You sort of used to making very, very slow progress because there's stuff holding you back. Kind of that part of yourself holding you back is what's holding you back. So unlearn level up is is the shorthand thing, right? Just that I need to understand also that not all people get gameplay shorthand. Right? Uh, so in a way, music analogy is better. Right? The uh, the great ways to participate in the concession community is either small improvised jam sessions. You put a post in, a couple of people just join by sheer luck, serendipity, and off you go, right? And you're jamming. Um, or you could have a plan, a strategy, and you do the whole sort of symphony orchestra. You have loads and loads of sort of themed similar posts. And you explore, and you compose, and you build, right? And you start, eventually get to a grand finale when everything is revealed and everyone is just playing beautifully. I happen to be kind of an... I like jazz improvs, I like folk music, fiddle music, uh, I like Mozart particularly, symphony orchestras. Um, so I'm cool with any of these. And this is just analogies, by the way, just kind of looking at posts and comments as if they are music already. And then we get very close to also sort of see the analogy and build further and anchor it back to us and that, oh, if it's, if it's music, am I allowed to sing along? Yeah, sure you are. You just sing along. And this is also one of those things that I'm big on, right? And it's built on inclusivity, right? If someone sings a bit out of key sometimes, I mean, it happens, right? Someone is using the F word or someone is saying what the F is going on or someone is doing this or something like that. Sometimes I remove some of those offensive comments because it could risk the rail things, right? It could scare away people, right? <laughs> if everyone starts sort of swearing like a sailor, it's it's not always going to make for authenticity, right? Not by sort of default anyway. But if someone is now and then having a bad day or singing out of key or sort of doing something that is kind of not perfect, then that is sort of part of the whole thing, right? I had a wonderful guy that helped me play, I think it's called busking in English, right? We basically just join a group of people playing the fiddle out in some gig in, in north of Sweden. Uh, and I played a bit out of tune. And I was gotten recently invited, and there was these kind of really cool guys that played fiddle, right? And I wanted desperately want to be part of that experience. And he just looked at me and said, yeah, it just... It just gets a bit richer, don't worry. And that, it made the world to me when he said that, right? And then, as if by magic, my play improved. Because I let go of a big chunk of my fear, right? I wanted to sort of measure up being as cool as those guys who played, right? Because I had played for years, and I, I really, I'm, they, they were really cool guys. So, but I mean, it was the timing also. He just sort of looked at me, cut a couple of seconds, yeah, no problem. Right? Uh, and this is what we can, can do, right? If we 
see a post. It's a bit of a terrible header. The picture is not kind of the best picture you could ever hope for, right? The text is a bit jumbled. It's not perfect English. Loads of things wrong with it. But if we then comment and respond to that post as if we respond to the spirit and the intention with which it was written, that will make the world for the, 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 the person who posted it. Right? Mm. So, um, and it's just the post to come. I mean, this is kind of, I still think this is cool, right? That this can sort of get out of, um, this is, could unfold out of just posts and comments. But I mean, it takes some doing, right? Because, um, again, you need to unlearn things. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> And people also should sort of be fully allowed to so if how to put this. If someone wants to put only visual storytelling in the conversation community, that's great, right? Because visual storytelling is really, really important. I mean because we do have limited time on our hands, right? So visual storytelling is a very effective format and medium for sort of sharing lots and lots of complex information in a very short time. Basically kind of a nice picture, right? And it's kind of there, the whole story, in one picture. And we can consume it and sort of be enriched by it in a couple of seconds. And then again, there's some people who want to sort of write walls of text. That's also cool. Um, so they're like a very kind of elite jazz trio, right? Those three guys in the corner who's playing very difficult music and, and if I want to play the fiddle with those guys, they would just look at me strangely and, say, and politely say, go away, right? But that's not the problem, right? Because there's hundreds and hundreds of people in there. I, mean, I can actually tell you a secret what I do sometimes. Uh, if there's a topic and I really want to have some conversation going, some comments and added perspectives, because I really want to find out more about that topic and post, then I plus mention people in the post and then I go check how do I know which one's the plus post. Well, I go to that topic, the keywords, and I do a Google Plus search. And there they, there they are, those who are already interested in that particular topic. And I just browse through very quickly. This just takes a minute. And then I find, yeah, these three, four, five guys, or women, they're already members of the conversation committee. Or they are not members, but they pretty much could be because I know them from other circumstances or other communities or circles. Right? So I plus mention them and some of them join right? and comment. It's the simplest thing. And usually they are happy with sort of being pinged because it's an interest of theirs. Right? It's whether it's, it's, it's um, politics or it's an environment or something. But obviously this, this it, it helps that I have kind of a very sort of structured approach for how I do my posts with sort of keywords and, and stuff, right? So I can do these searches in a very kind of effective way, right? But I mean this nothing's stopping you from doing the same. Uh, and people are usually happy with sort of being pinged, right? If there's something uh, pinged about that interesting. Them. If it's just content marketing, not so much then it's just, they might answer just to being polite, right? But that we shouldn't do. But pinging in terms of a mutual interest, you usually happen with it. Because that just basically just helps them find stuff. Because there's tons of stuff out there. Um, could it possibly more? I mean, there's hundreds of, sort of these practical things. But I mean, this is where we could do any which great questions that comes to you a couple of minutes or hours from now or next day or the day after, we could put them in the post, right? Uh, the the make things happen post, which is already exists in the conversation committee, which is kind of the um, yeah. At least, at least there's an opportunity to to have kind of some kind of ongoing Q and A on that post. 
and we could pin it for a while and then this it doesn't get lost so I'm still working on the whole structure because if we have one pin post that needs to sort of actually grow into some kind of a super post the center yeah. hub so to speak and from there would be kind of jumping off posts to all the other great things that are happening so it becomes kind of a really big mind map eventually but then uh, those who then understand this mind map and begin to navigate uh, around it and have being helped by it these people will get sort of supercharged and they get to know much more, understand much more about the conversation community and those who don't have access to the mind map because they don't know about it suddenly there will be kind of two camps, right? those who are in the know and those who are kind of left outside, right? the elite and the newbies right? so it's, this is really, really difficult once you begin to look at it because I really want to have it as level as possible. I know that it can't be fully level because we are sort of coming from, I mean, English is my second language and stuff, right, and different interests and, and levels of awareness and whatnot, right, different cultures and different approaches and introverts and extroverts and then a couple of hundred other dimensions, so it's really, really difficult. Uh, but that said, uh, if the intention is this sort of level playing field, then comments pretty much works as the action, um, the sort of implementation, if you will, manifestation of the agency. Um, the invisible things are still kind of important, right? The fraction of a second before the agency, before the comment, is inclusivity. And, I mean, curiosity right before and inclusivity right after. See if I can prescribe. And this mm -hmm. might be important because this is just basically in the no, in the absolute here and now, in the in presence. So, 0.2 seconds before the agency, the, 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 the crafting and putting out there of the comment, there's curiosity. And a couple of seconds after, and a couple of minutes after, until you have gotten a uh, response to your comment, there's inclusivity. So, as a kind of a practical approach is kind of curiosity, agency, inclusivity. So curiosity is what brought your intention in commenting in the first place. The agency is the actual putting a comment out. Uh, the inclusivity is holding space for a great conversation to sort of to emerge out of the comments, out of the thread. This is what sometimes sometimes people don't understand that and it bears telling again and again that the comment thread and the complex responsive processing between the people as seen through the common thread and the conversation they are three different levels although they are usually very nested this is really sort of different things to, for people to wrap around with. but eventually we become this is what I talk about with 21st century literacy eventually we will learn to see, see these things that the common thread is basically just a digital artifact it's kind of just words on the screen that's the common thread it's just content the complex responsive process is we are using the back and forth of the common thread to explore contexts, our own individual contexts in terms of perspectives and also eventually a shared context. We get to sort of talk about stuff, right? And the third level is the conversation itself, which is emergent, I mean the, the ambience if you will. Nice when it happens, but we can't sort of mandate it. We can't force it to happen. It happens when it happens, and it's fine, and it's great. So it's like, uh, there's a musical analogy here again, actually. The, the, the common thread is the notes, the score, the musical score. The complex responsive process is kind of the, the, the amount of practice we put in on our instrument and our kind of reading the score and translating it into music. And then the conversation is the actual live performance. So once we see that these things are both different and also intricately interwoven, the conversation sort of comes alive. And once they do, then it's just very, very cool to sort of participate in almost any which conversation. Once we sort of understand this is really happening, right? And um, but again, then there's kind of a cool thing with digital conversation because we have the transcript it's not lost this is also why I like recorded hangouts right? 
because it's video. It's there. You should go back to it. So my first couple of recorded Hangouts and they were a bit cringe-worthy, right, to be honest, because I was used to new doing it. But maybe I've done 40 or 50 of them. I mean, so if it's just a thing, right? So I sort of let go of, of the fear and the, the stuff, right? the, the, the concerns. I'm just talking. Uh, and that in itself is a literacy, right? It's kind of this connectivity that can reach across time and space to, to, to other people. So um, every good musician knows this, right? Not sure who it was. I think it was an American singer. And she said that she sings for those at the far end of the concert. Ah, Terry says just goodbye. Uh, thanks for being here, Terry. Um, yeah, so I mean, in, in closing, we could just, just have a kind of a roundup. Um, any additional thoughts? Or maybe you're cool. Then it's kind of time to just wrap things up. I turned my mic on, but I, I'm not sure that I have anything to say. It's been a great <laughs> conversation, though. Yeah. I mean, the, the, I did sort of put some nice things in, I think. Um, Absolutely. So, <laughs> and I mean, th these are all, always, uh, I mean, th for me, they're great fun, right, to actually go get to meet you. Uh, but sometimes I have this um, propensity sort of to um, try to cram in as many insights as I possibly can, right? So yeah, uh, I was feeling that for myself, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and but I mean the uh, if we by analogy and by empathy can continue to sort of to internalize these three, right, agency, inclusivity, curiosity, then we are absolutely good to go, right? And then we can do really great roadmaps, but because we still will allow ourselves sort of to tweak the map in any which wrinkle and fold and, and, and version that we want, right? So, um, I mean, the conversations is what we want because that's sort of the magic, right? That's where we get to sort of share the good stuff, the resonance, the kind of the feeling of mutuality, the uh, telling of stories. Right? But in order for that to happen, there needs to be some complex responsive processes. Right? There needs to be some sort of hashing back and forth stuff, practice, right? Rehearsing. Uh, and we need to sort of start putting stuff out there before it's perfect, right? Before it's sort of fully polished. This this is difficult. Oh, yeah. right? the, the, I mean, this is really difficult to sort of put stuff out there that's not that we don't think is sort of sufficient and it's good enough, right? Uh, but if you still do that, this is kind I of overcome that to a yeah. I'm sorry. Apologize. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, I mean, I, I see, I'm seeing that, and suddenly I hear more of your voice from in your posts, which is great, right? So it's oh, cool. it's a paradox, right? That <laughs> it's it's like the polishing thing, sort of removes uh, value, right? But obviously there's a time and place also. If we want to sort of put public announcement and on our website and, and this and that and a big presentation for lots and lots of people in an audience, there, there's time where there's where it makes perfect sense to have it per polished to perfection or as close as we can, right? If we really want to do the big shindig, the opening performance, the premiere, it's good. It does have its place. Yeah, it does it have its place more or less in, 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 in not sort of completely out of tune, right? So it's kind of yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, but again, then the uh, this is also one of those things that might be good with a roadmap because then we could sort of add stuff under the hood of the roadmap because we already have the transcript, right? All these posts and comments and comment threads. It's just that we don't know how what to do with it. Right? 
because it's sort of gone. Um, right. But I mean, it is already the community memory. Yes. So it is going to sort of be increasingly important. And eventually, we just almost have to figure out where's the stuff and as to anything we would do. I mean, even if we would just kind of, let's say 10 years from now, we have a big reunion, right? And then we have kind of the, the highlight reels. And then it would be kind of almost necessary to sort of, okay, so what, what, what really was the good stuff, if any, right? It's a big task. <laughs> yeah, finding that the, that stuff, right? It's not, it's not simple at all. And then also for all the others, uh, I mean, let's say we get this to scale. Let's say you and many others in the conversation go ahead and start your own communities. Basically, kind of, this is what we did in conversation. And I'm doing it like this here, and it's loads of fun and really great and really meaningful. Right? So, if you're going to do something digital, this is possibly a really good use of the tool, sharing our stories, basically. So, it's it's in a way, it's eventually very simple. Um, but then we need to figure out the whole meta tags, uh, community memory, library, what not want, we want to call it, right? And then it becomes of the essence to have a roadmap. I mean, if Farina says to me tomorrow, Farina says to me, I've decided I'm going to start a new community and it's going to be like this, right? John, maybe your yeah. roadmap is parallel road. Yeah, I mean that's a really, really. A, I mean, I'm glad you said that it's because a few they, parallel, <laughs> few parallel road map. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, Google Plus, among the couple of million people who are most active, it's almost like a massively multiplayer, parallel nested game already. It's a really, really big yam session. So it sounds like an awful rack in the times, and there's loads and loads of cats and bacon, which no one has yet sort of fully figured out what that really means. It's like cats and bacon is like the drums, right? Or do, do you know the vuvuzela in South Africa when they played soccer in South Africa yeah. a couple of years ago? Oh yeah, yeah. It was just an awful noise, right? Yeah. 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 But what if that sort of is the the bass thing, kind of the, the rhythm, the drums of the whole togetherness thing. Right? I mean, I'm not even sure if that is, but it could be, right? And then I'm thinking about that now. Yeah, I mean, if Why? that would be, then that. everyone is already playing, right? So there's a kind of a massive parallelism going on. I mean, for me, this is wildly exciting because I have sort of started math and I know a bit or two about sort of Par massively mu multiplayer parallel computing, right? That's basically what our neocortexes are already doing. So, on on a conscious level, our minds can do, I think it's 10 bits per second. On a conscious level, we can't actually put our shoes on. No. We, we, we're really lost, right? But what we are really skilled at, we're shunting back and forth between conscious and subconscious because on our full subconscious mind, we can do 10 million bits per second. And it's a million times more in terms of bandwidth and processing capability, computing. It's just that it's subconscious, right? It's a bit of a snag. So eventually people will figure out that the conscious mind is just there for focus to provide some semblance of sort of continuity and sequence and linearity. So kind of, first I put my socks on and then I put my shoes on and then I go out. More or less in that order. But the rest of it is on the subconscious level, but if we sort of get skilled in shunting back and in the framing and the reframing, there's loads of things we can do. I mean, we can ride a bicycle, we could sort of perform a jazz trio, we could um, anything really. Uh, and yeah, the the neocortex is um, this might sound strange, but I mean the neocortex is almost happy if this is recognized and acknowledged that 
if I could sort of as, as if I'm right now talking with my neocortex. I mean, I, I know this sounds strange, right? but and then I tell to a judge, go ahead, surprise me, do your paralleling worst, right? <laughs> <laughs> do the full ten million bits per second, right? So, but yeah. we, this is what we sometimes call creativity, right? It's just that creativity yeah. is ongoing, it's continuous. The creativity never stops. But it looks like if we are having writer's block, or sometimes we have this epiphanies, or sometimes we have sort of stream of consciousness that we write really good stuff, or we sort of create something, or we write a piece of music. But that is just to do with us being a bit of a blockhead because we're doing the 10 bits per second, because we want to sort of do it and pretend as if we are doing it on, on a conscious level, as if we are artists, right? Uh, but if we sort of acknowledge that, it's just getting a good, really good handshake protocol in between conscious and unconscious. Then eventually we realize this is the creativity is coming just ev all the time. I mean, I, I can tell you what I'm doing sometimes. When I have a really thorny problem, right before I go to sleep, I write that problem down. And I sort of tell my brain, can you, can I please have that solved by mor the mor next morning? Thank you. And usually this, right? So next morning, you said I need to sort of scribble down on on my notebooks, right? Because sometimes these answers are really weird, right? And they are just to scribble things. I mean, I have a couple of hundred notebooks. I sort of have grown kind of a bit of a methodology for how to do that. It's usually diagrams. Because the subconscious doesn't sort of speak English, right? It's not no. the subconscious is not kind of, that's not the, 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 the <laughs> it's 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 resonance, it's patterns, it's yep. stuff. Right. Uh, there you go. Then, you the nail on the head. It's stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. But one, once you know that you can actually listen to yourself, so to speak, on a deeper level, then the handshake protocol improves, right? The more you listen to yourself, the, the better it gets. It's just that you yeah. need to be very clear on so you don't get to be a bit too crazy, right? You, you really want to keep the con conscious part, right? Yes, but John, I um, yeah. I want to you know simply give an example. Yeah, there are so many communities around us in the Google Plus and anywhere other place, and I have noticed that people go in, come out. Nobody knows why they went in, why they came out, uh, and what happened, you know, as a result. And so the, that is what. I, I am in my professional life. I always was for what the impact uh, that people make, and uh, that's why when I talk about the roadmap or any other terminology you want to yeah. call it, it's for that. It is uh, yeah. because this community is different, uh, and we are, you know, we are really connecting at different levels and. Uh, I love this community, so I just want it to be, uh, you know, I just want us to have that clarity, that yeah. uh, the clarity that you're, you're always like that, but maybe <clears throat> all those things you say can also be said in a different, both ways, not only one way, but you can, yeah, yeah. you call it something and then I may interpret it not what you meant, or if there is in both ways, then we can understand it better. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, you're making an absolutely essential point. I mean, this is where, see if I can sort of make some sense in my head, right? Uh, what we could do is to have some kind of a distributed uh, community memory, and that could be annotated on people's individual introductions posts. Mm. So then we give back to everyone who is participating and we, va we validate, acknowledge, annotate 
and give back in this kind of symbolical way. Here's sort of something that goes back to the person participating, right? And then eventually there is a growing sense of ownership. This is me, yeah. this is what I've been doing, this is my story, this is how I've told my story. And it's actually, it's, I mean, Google Plus is eminently unsuited for doing this because it's not designed that way. Because, so it would be a bit clunky, but it would still work. So imagine having an introductions post. I mean, this is me, right? Owning a piece of the digital real estate inside the community. This is me telling, hi, I am so and so, right? And then we basically just look at it from marrying the two concepts of, let's say, community memory. Uh, well, three things, right? Community memory as the principle or the outcome. Uh, the digital transcripts, I mean, select things. So I was on a bit on this, kind of similar with the paid forward series, which I loved. So I, I need to sort of bring that back up again. Basically, people paying forward to select the next, the next post and the next post and the next post, right? So there's a long series of people sort of connecting with each other. And that could be combined with this. So you have uh, basically the highlight reel, right? These are other people suggested that Farnas wrote these and these and these posts and we are acknowledging, validating, we are remembering those and we are adding them back here in the actual common thread on the introductions post. And I mean this would make for a wonderful gesture, it would build community memory, it would be build reciprocity, it would build trust and also uh, if everyone then eventually would agree that, yeah, this is my introduction post. I'm stewarding and, 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 and holding this post. Right? This is me. Right? And, uh, and it doesn't need to be all of it, right? It's just those things that p people suggest that, Farnas, I really like this post, so I'm putting this back into a com as a comment, as a link to your introduction post. This is me kind of... That's why I said Ubuntu, right? Someone says... Uh, hi, and then the other response, I see you. Uh, um, the, we, uh, yeah. Yes. The, uh, the community is, so, is pretty uh, complex and constantly changing, it, you know, organically. Yeah. Hard to map it, in, it's hard to map it in a, you know, a snapshot crystalline way because it keeps changing. Yeah. Growing and but it's all, it is all about the people. And I think what you're suggesting uh, makes the people the, the pointers to what's going on in the community. And it's kind of a living map, hopefully. And they, uh, re, you know, so you have these, each introduction is a, it's a, the, it's a person. And uh, it's, uh, it gives you some kind of insight in the community. And there's no one way into it. And there's no one path through the community. It's hard to map it. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard to map. I mean, and if we would succeed in mapping it, that would in itself almost add to the complexity regardless. And so this is, I mean, not exactly. only complex, it's almost a wicked problem, right? So because yeah. this, if we would kind of get the perfect roadmap, the perfect, co the perfect community memory, that would itself be such an immense artifact, right? So. I mean, yes. you, you do know about you do know about Wikipedia, right? The edit wars. The the what? There's a, there's a small group of people that are doing most of the edits inside the Wikipedia articles. Yes. Yeah. And it's called the edit wars. So oh, people no. who are sort of thought of as less lesser Wikipedians, they get edited out from the more August members. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the ones with sh sharper pencils. <laughs> so, uh, and that is not good. Uh, so, yeah. in a way, the complexity thing is inherently good in a way because it sort of mimics life itself. So it it is messy. It should stay messy. But then again, this is also why I say the the one and only rule from now is just adding comments on other people's posts because there's kind of simplicity beyond complexity. I mean the pull, the strange attractor. And really inclusivity agency and, and curiosity is kind of 
me just sort of shining a flashlight now and then, right? So you, at, so you don't have to stumble as often. You don't have to fall flat on your face every time because you can sort of have some kind of these three words as some, some kind of a more, we are heading more or less towards that direction. Right? And um, let's see, but I mean, the corporate, the community memory. Um, the thing here is to sort of see that it's uh, the, the distributed sense of ownership, right? So everyone sort of gets to feel a deep sense of belonging. I mean, I, I love one thing that's, that I think it's in the end of some American movies. There's a voice that says, we made this. <laughs> and I, I just love that, right? I think it's a child voice that says, we made this. Yes, I re I've yeah, I know it just what you mean. Yeah, and I made, I made this. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean this is kind of where. Uh, so, if there is going to be a community memory, nice and shiny, it's going to be worth a couple of billion, and we're going to sell it to others, and, and install internets, and God knows what we will do. Uh, I don't like that would be fine if everyone who participated can feel that, right? We made this. This, but there's so many things that we need to sort of iron out, unwrinkle before that, right? So it's kind of that is a bit daunting, right? So let's say, uh, let's say that I mean, just imagining things, right? Me, me wildly speculating. Let's say there's a bunch of people inside Google who realizes that hey, this conversation is actually taking place right inside Google Plus, right? Let's say Larry Page says, "Hi guys, you're doing cool stuff." Yep. Yeah, and suddenly he would put us on this as a suggested user list. Then, yep. wham, bam, there's 100,000 more people wanted to join. Mm. What do we do then? They might be looking for a map. <laughs> <laughs> then we have to have a map. I mean, there's no arguing. <laughs> then a roadmap it is. <laughs> Doesn't matter if John thinks that roadmap's not. 100% cool yet, there's going to be roadmap, and now. <laughs> uh, so, and by then, I mean, I might even have to wear a tie, right? Oh no. Heavens forbid. <laughs> no. no ties, <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> so. But um, I didn't, John, I didn't mean that. What no, I, 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 I hear you. You, you, you mean it in, in the best possible way. And the roadmap is for us to uh, fully understand and fully be on board with what is happening in a way that so we can contribute the best mm -hmm. we know how. And I absolutely yeah. get that. And it's a really, really great idea. It's just that those roadmaps are... Uh, I, I actually do design some of these roadmaps as part of my day job. So I, I personally I couldn't sort of love this idea more. But it's just that it's it takes five people at least three days and being one hundred percent concentrated throughout those three days. And then you have fledgling bears glimpse of an outline of these roadmaps, right? So it's uh, I mean, I could show you. Uh, better yet yeah, to show you uh, here. This is kind of not sure if you see this. Um, we see it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So um, this is a method card. It's part of the whole methodology. I design. Um, uh, collaborative sense making sessions. Where I basically help clients get from A to B using a very kind of interactive, participative, collaborative way of crafting a roadmap. So this is kind of what I do. Uh, getting from A to B sounds simple, but usually these clients go, they ask me because all their usual strategies, wayfinding, pathways, scenarios, stories, whatnot, all the clever things they've thought out, 
no longer works. So A to B and there's snags in between, right? I've simplified that into story form. So I basically say somewhere in between A and B, kind of I call here B dragons. And you don't want to go near the dragons because they will sort of spew fire on you and eat you and kill you, right? So that's kind of not what the client wants. So you need to sort of take a completely different attack. You possibly sometimes also need to re redefine A to B in terms of getting it from E to F. But sometimes you need to go backwards and go from B to A and see kind of, okay, so when I got from B to A, then A is no longer A, it's E. So now I go back from E to F and sometimes need to go from E to B and it becomes even more complex than that. Right? So it's kind of... Uh, but these things can be done, right? So it's, n it's, no, it's not impossible. It's just that uh, having people understand... Uh, I mean, it, it's a sense of ownership thing, which is difficult. If I would go tell people that your map is crap, here's a new one, it's much better. That's really difficult, right? That's really, really difficult because people are fond of their own maps. I mean, I can give you an example. I had a kind of a, a Swedish roadmap book in my car up until a year ago. It was from 1987. I still worked more or less okay, right? Because most of the roads didn't change all that much. But eventually I had to throw it out because now it was kind of just more almost useless, right? Because it was from 1987. And this is almost with precision what my clients are doing, right? They are kind of, they are navigating using old maps. And l the big problem is not when they realize the map is completely useless, because then it's kind of just a strong incentive to actually sort of get rid of it and get a new one. That's, those are the simple tasks. Those are the simple client assignments, right? But when they have a map and it's 99% accurate, but they're doing really, really stupid and really sort of expensively stupid things because that 1% thing sort of trips them up. That's difficult, right? Because then I say, yeah, that map is crap. Get rid of it. But it's 99% right. Why should I? Well, it's not 100% right. And you need to really have a really great map because you are going to invest a couple of millions and billions. So it needs to be 100% right. Otherwise, it won't cut it, right? You can't tell... So my client can't tell their client that we can almost guarantee that you kind of sort of will almost get almost this product, right? No, <laughs> they want to get this product by when costing this much, bam, right? 100%. <laughs> so then old maps are, needs to go, right? But they are kind of fond of their map and they're calling it all, almost sort of organizing culture and the way we do things here. And all the managers they get their six-figure income from defending the old map, right? So when I say the map is crap, they take it personally. I mean, they shouldn't, right? Because it's just a bloody map. But if their paycheck depends on defending the established whatnot, right? The map, the way we do things, the organizing, I mean, then it becomes really, really... I mean, they become defensive, and you, we need to understand that, right? Um, I mean, let's say, just for the sake of argument, I have seven or almost soon eight million page views, right, in my Google Plus account. But that's not the big deal, right, because I've shared 10,000 Google Plus posts, and that sort of tends to happen, right? Sort of... I won. I have a great map. You, if you don't have 7 or 8 million page views on Google+, then my map is better than yours, right? No. But I have had sort of some really strange conversations with people that suddenly start to like me better because I have 7 million page views. I mean, this is strange, right? My, my question yeah. from you is, did you want to have 10,000 uh, right up? Was that your goal or was that your road, um, the map you wanted to, you know, 
So that's the question. Yeah, I mean, what, what, when I started, this was in August 2011, right? And my first thousand posts, they were just strange, right? Because I was angry, because Occupy happened. And I thought, wow, these idealist young people, they are going to be crushed by police, by, by, by stuff, right? So I was very angry. And then a funny thing happened right in somewhere in the beginning of 2012. I stopped being angry. I still want to do good things, right, for good people and let the good people win, right? And let the bastards sort of, whatever we want the bastards to happen to. Uh, but I stopped being angry because it didn't help. And then I started to put stuff out there because I realized that if I'm not sort of fueled by anger and righteous anger and righteous indignation and kind of ecrasile and fam and crush the bastards or anything, right? What should I do now? And I didn't know, right? And then I had to write a bunch of stuff, throw out it because I needed to figure out what's the story? What's the narrative? What's the story? And how do I align these two? So it's just because I didn't understand what to do with the network and how to play well with the network. That's why I needed to put some great stuff up. But in the very beginning there was two cool things before I sort of got angry. So my first two glimpses of Google Plus, when I first joined, I saw the plus thing, right? The little plus button. My first reaction, the first time I saw the plus button, I said, wow, cool, a game. I mean, I'm a game designer also on the side, right? So it's kind of, for me, that was a kind of big thing, right? And the second thought, when I was browsing around, because I wanted to find out, what, okay, so what's the game? What's the score? What's the rules? What's the guidelines, right? Because I saw that it was a game. Then I saw, wow, there's no rules. Even cooler, we get to write our own rules. And how do you do that? Well, by plusing, sharing, posting, commenting. That's kind of how we play the game, right? So, I've kept more or less the approach. I'm calling it win-win-win. So this is kind of my approach, and I'm kind of trying to sort of market that approach to others, right? So if I get a win, if I see to it that you also get a win in a conversation, in an exchange, in a transaction, in whatnot. Right? But the third win is increasingly important. The larger following, the larger reach I have the more I need to sort of be mindful of the others, the audience. Yeah. So I, I sort of need to play well, not only the chamber music in between us, the small stuff. I need to also see what carries. Right? It needs to be relatable, shareable. And I mean, I'm not really good at that because I am interested in strange stuff. So, but so I had to sort of train myself, right? So I needed to figure out, I mean, two years from now, I thought all those are just sharing cats and, and dogs and stuff. What useless crap. That was my honest opinion, right? Cats are good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that was my kind of feeling, right? Because it's useless waste <laughs> of bandwidth and digital space, right? Because, because yeah. there was, there's so much of it. But then I sort of have, I, I sort of can... Uh, I'm a bit slow at times, but I do learn. So now I don't think that anymore. So now i kind of beginning to see that this, this collective intelligence happening. Right? And it's very strange, but it might be wonderful eventually. Uh, Rega regarding the cats? Yeah, I uh, mean the whole sort of signaling thing, right? I, mean, well, I, was, I wanted to say regarding the cats that uh, I wish I could remember the word, but there there's something that's been emanating, I guess, especially from Japanese culture. That I forget the, what the word is called, but it's like all the cute things, and certainly Hello Kitty, and that whole thing. It's actually con it's taken quite seriously, even though it's very light it, in nature, yeah. and it's considered to be a way of by aficionados as a way of uh, this cuteness is. It's not just trivial. It's supposed to be changing the world for the better and I experience it that way too. Yeah. I'm a Hello Kitty fan. <laughs> yeah, I mean the the, the Have you, you know that word? What's the word, the Japanese word? 
I forgot now, but I mean, the, oh, this, you've heard of that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's considered to be a cultural movement, you know. Yeah, it is. So maybe it's not so bad that we have the cats. No, I mean, I, I think, I mean, ob obviously, my, my my taste limit is probably when you do, it's both a cat and a waterfall, and you also do Auto Awesome, so it's snowflakes at the same time, right? Because then I almost can't watch it anymore. I know. Uh, but I mean, I, I, I do need to sort of... Uh, so, I mean, Ron, you're, you're the living master here when you sort of discover the, the liberation of sort of having no taste. That you, yeah. you just see that all of this is good in some way, right, depending on how you look at it. But for yeah. me, I mean, I'm just, just being honest that, that uh, I am, uh, uh, don't care particularly much for those HDR kind of, kind of strange uh, saturated colors. Oh, sorry, Fernas, go on. Um, anyway, cats are not our problem right now. But I apologize. I want just to tell you that I have to leave at 12. Oh, no problem, no problem. I mean, we should, Is we that should okay? close. We've gone, gone on for quite some time. Yeah, yeah. So, um, wh why did we get into the cats thing? Was there some... Um, well, you were angry. Uh, <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole um, kind of because how it starts, start, started and things, right? And uh, um, and the roadmap and why I'm doing these things. Ah, yes. Uh, so, I mean, out of the wow, cool game, wow, we get to write our own rules. Oh, yeah. So then if the game then is win-win-win, if how you get others to sort of play win-win-win is to start a digital community and just sort of lead by example and having others kind of join uh, and then eventually getting more and more people to be brought up to speed in okay so can we write our own games and our own rules for how to play the games here yeah, and how do you do that and then we are kind of full into kind of the whole methodologies roadmaps and sense making and stuff so that's kind of why I'm writing about those things uh, because honestly, to my understanding, those are, I mean, it's, it's science, it's tested, it works, it can be falsified, it can be built further on, it can be shared, it's shareable. Uh, there's loads and loads of really great people. Even though most of them are scientists, they're still kind of great people and they sort of wrote and tested these things, right? So it's kind of, um, I mean, that's kind of me, right? I have kind of a bit of a kind of twin origin, right? Kind of the... I mean, I'm happy to doing, if we call it chakras or mysticism or spirit or whatnot, right? I'm really, really cool with that. That's one side of me. But I'm also equally cool with sort of doing science. Anything from biosemiotics and neuroscience and all that, right? Because I don't basically see any necessity to sort of... Um, do one to the exclusion of the other. But that's just me, right? Um, and so part of it is the recognition of we can't do community just by science. That would be bordering on awful, right? John has figured out there's a perfect scientific logical way of doing community. So just let's everyone just do that. And no one should do anything else because this is what logic and science says. So there you go. Right? That wouldn't work. But we can't do just spirit either, just on a wing and a prayer, right? That would be too fussy. Uh, I mean, this is still something we're grappling with as the whole humanity is grappling with this, right? So my analogy for this is we have sort of a clearing in the forest where we have culture, science, shared understanding, language, stuff, right? But it's just a clearing. Then right outside that sort of area that we actually do know and understand and sort of can talk intelligently about, there's loads of other stuff, stuff that we don't know of. And the way I see it, spirit, spirituality, mysticism, esotericism, is a way to sort of being able to sort of take a stroll out in the woods, out in the forest, beyond our ken, 
beyond the clearing of the forest. But I mean, that's just my opinion. Right? This is kind of just explaining to sort of why I'm cool with having both these sort of sides to me. Uh, and I usually don't talk much about sort of chakras and spirituality and things because it usually weirds people out to no end. Right? And I mean, I'm considered sort of weird enough, right? I don't want to sort of weird people out sort of more than I already do. Right? So, um, but it's kind of an ongoing challenge for us, right? I mean, what's beyond our own ken? Right? What's what's yonder them hills, right? What's on the other side? Right? We don't know, right? Maybe we will ever never know, right? But uh, I mean, that's right. We ha we are curious, yeah. right? I mean, so curiosity for me is kind of just right. proof already that 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 there's spirit, right? Because we are curious, right? Um, inclusivity is kind of if someone sort of stumbles into your clearing in the forest, you 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 get them some some coffee and some croissant, right, or some tea and biscuits, right? Because that's what we do. Agency is kind of why we fell trees and built stockades and built cultures and civilizations and language in the first place, right? And I mean, I really don't know why we're doing this. I mean, honestly, deep down, but we seem to build cities and civilizations and cultures and languages and, and stuff. We seem to want to build stuff. Um, and eventually it might be good, right? Um, some of the stuff we are building is kind of, I think, 80, 70 or 80 percent of science is backed by the military. Right? So a large part of science is kind of geared towards killing as many people as possible, as effectively as possible, right? Preferably by drones and by remote. So it's kind of not science is not sort of without its problems, right? It's been a pretty uh, good historic driver of technology. Yeah, I mean. Uh, we are sitting right I now mean, one, inside this Google, Google Hangout thing, right? And the whole internet protocol yeah. grew out of having to design a network that could sort of withstand nuclear war. Yeah. So, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, but I mean, again, uh, tools are just tools, right? I mean, yeah. langu language is a tool. Uh, so, I mean, English is really, really crappy as languages go, right? But it's yeah. what, it's what we it's what we've got. I mean, I would much prefer we just did music. Yeah. Because it's a much better language. <laughs> It's but <laughs> if if I would sing to you and just using Swedish, right, that would be really, really weird. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, English it is, uh, the written word it is, uh, digital proprietary platforms it is, at least for a while longer. Uh, and that contraption in all by itself is a really, really cobbled together. It's 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 two by fours and loads of duct tape, right? That's what it is. Combining English written words and digital proprietary platforms. It's it's really an awful contraption, the whole thing. But if we can get it to work, well it works, right? I mean I could show you let's see if we can make some sense here. Uh Kind of. I'm not sure if you see that it's some black pen and some blue pen, right? Yeah, but it's yeah. it's uh, it's faded. Yeah, and it's because I ran out of paper the other day, right? <laughs> so I need to reuse an old page, and I write new stuff on it. So it basically becomes a mess, right? But it works, so why not? So, um, right, doesn't really matter, right? If we, if we can sort of get sweet music out of the scribbles, it's good, right? Um, then, okay, so the process was a bit messy. Uh, doesn't really matter, right? Uh, that's also a thing. Um, sometimes when I spend kind of 
hours and hours on sort of doing my polished grand Google Plus post, right? I did one the other day was kind of dynamic narrative alignment and there's loads and loads of sort of keywords. Um, that was a good one. No no one commented. I didn't no I didn't. I guess I only plus yeah. it. Yeah, I mean but I I have kind of grown no, to I accept saved that. I saved that one. Yeah, I, I, I've grown I to accept it. that right because this right. is kind of me uh, bringing the whole game, right? I'm kicking it out of the field. So I shouldn't expect anyone to comment because it's just too polished, right? There's there's no way you can edge in a comment there any which way, right? It's a very good resource. Yeah. yeah. So so uh, but if there is kind of a one good enough way to craft blog posts is probably to just sort of write it down really quickly, right? Something we're passionate about, and we just need to share. We need to tell the others, right? And then we just write it, we slap a picture on it, and bam, off we go. Right? Those are almost always good for sort of getting the conversation going, right? Because people can sense that, yeah, someone wants to wants some help figuring things out, right? So. Um, but other than that, it's mostly for everyone to sort of find their voice and how to sort of clothe that voice into words and images. It's it's uh, and obviously I can say tons of sort of all the craft, right? But I mean craft is basically uh, by the end of the day basically just craft. So best way is just write loads of stuff and then eventually you get really good at it. Um, Again, it's a bicycle, right? It's kind of how do you manage to get really good at riding a bicycle? Well, you fall off a lot of times. And eventually, you get you get the hang of it. It's um, I think I more or less covered. So, in a way, um, the agency that might be able for other viewers and readers and listeners to sort of glimpse from this I mean one of the drawbacks with these videos I do that they're usually way too long right but then again way too long is kind of a matter of, of perspective right should I have kicked you out an, an hour ago already I mean so what's too long right? but what is promising at least in the future is that there's already growing companies that are offering uh, <coughs> transcription services and we can already do in Google Plus so if there's someone has actually is but busy right I mean m many people pretend they're busy but some people are actually busy uh, there's loads of really great people inside the Conseil community and they are really frantically busy because they are kind of doing important stuff I mean really good important stuff uh, we can then offer them, here's, jump to 37 minutes, 30 seconds in, because then I'm saying something that is more or less cool, right? And that suddenly it, it, it rediscovers, rekindles, revitalizes the whole thing, right? Right there on the spot, because then some, someone can access this, whatever, gem of an insight or good part of the conversation or whatever, right? Somebody has to take the time to do that, like a writer writing a novel, but then the, yeah. the reader, it saves them a lot of time to have that yeah. experience. I mean, this is again why um, um, things like biosemiotics, things like meta tags, things like automated transcription services, all those cool and strange and weird and wonderful things, they are eventually going to sort of grow in importance. Because we can get the both best of both worlds, right? We can just have conversations, and then the algorithms, the the stuff under the hood, will sort of sort things out, right? Then I could basically just so, yeah. I could sort of put this keyword in, um, or I could sort of talk with my algorithm buddy, my digital avatar, and say, "Hey, dear John Keldon, digital avatar thingy, 
did I say something remotely interesting in that video last week? And then my own avatar says, yeah, at around 37 minutes, 30 seconds in, in this video, you said something pretty cool. Okay, thanks. And here it is. So that, well, the, those, are the, those are the tools we should have, right? Those yeah, are the kind of the... Right. And, I mean, the data, the algorithms are already there. It's just that it's got squirreled away by, by Google, the mothership. Because they're using it for their purposes. Because, I mean, but we need to be forgiving because they are actually running a business. So we are right. adding content and turning their AdWords, AdSense stuff into premium value, right? Adding right. relevance and whatnot to their stuff, the data, the aggregated data. So it's a bit of a deal, right? I mean, we get to play with uh, loads of fun, cool tools for free, and they get large chunks of our data. But a couple of years from now, we should probably do distributed platforms we we get to own and get a sense and feel and ownership of our own data and then we can do f the full product mixtape right the full ongoing remix the highlight reels the serendipitous rediscoveries the I have one cool idea here I want to share with you what you could do, do we do with distributed platforms to just give you a story kind of what would be possible let's say we're talking about stuff and it's interesting meaningful and our digital avatars quickly scours all our network of friends and acquaintances. And then suddenly another person joins. And he got invited by our di digital avatars talking with his digital avatar. He got pinged, he got sent to this video. We didn't invite him, the algorithms did. And he joins and says something really cool because it's a matching thing. Right? That's already possible yeah. to do, right? But we don't can't we can't do that because we don't have the data. Okay. Thank you, yeah, John. Thanks. Yeah. Big thanks. I mean, now we need we need to sort of um, uh, close this down. I mean, it's been an absolute delight. Big thanks for your patience and listening. Uh, whatever questions, line of inquiries, we can sort of take those. I will copy and paste this. I should do that already. Uh, this is a real mother load of a transcript, right? This is the good stuff. Uh, thank there you we so go. Much. Yeah. Th thanks, and, and uh, see you in the, the conversation thank community. You. And um, Edwin, good to see you. And Paranas, good to see you again. Ron, thank you so much. Project Mixtape goes on to new heights and sublime wonders. Uh, with that, uh, dear participants, listeners, viewers, um, thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.